Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a U.S. district judge on Friday ordered Arkansas to continue payments to Planned Parenthood for its treatment of three women who challenged Governor Asa Hutchinson's directive cutting off Medicaid reimbursements to the organization. The order applied only to the case of the three plaintiffs, although the judge did suggest that Planned Parenthood as an organization might be able to successfully challenge the cutoff. Judge Christine Baker held that the three women, identified in court papers as Jane Doe's, had demonstrated that they would incur irrelevant irreparable harm should they not be able to access contraceptive care and other services through Planned Parenthood. The preliminary injunction issued by the judge on Friday follows a temporary restraining order she put in place two weeks ago. Hutchinson, a Republican, said in a statement that the ruling was limited to the three women and that he would direct the state health department to prohibit funding to Planned Parenthood consistent with the court's ruling. Planned Parenthood gets about $500 million annually in federal funds, largely in reimbursement under Medicaid, the government's health care program for the poor. In Arkansas, a reaction from social conservatives to the judge's move was swift. Planned Parenthood said almost all of its work in the state covered services other than abortions. A spokesman for the state attorney general said no decision had been made regarding an appeal of the ruling. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In a dramatic scene last night, a coalition of the nation's damaged women staged a drunken, tear-soaked march on the Capitol just after 2 a.m. Jane Carmichael has more. Thank you, Brooke. The damaged women began their protest yesterday afternoon, marching on the National Mall at about 4 p.m., and then marching away furious, saying they were done with Congress once and for all. But then they came back again late last night, insisting that someone in Washington listen to them for once. The late-night protest started with tearful apologies, but quickly moved to anger as marchers demanded that Congress pass a bill, making it illegal to say you love someone, and then up and leave as soon as there's one little problem. Why are you ignoring us? Stop ignoring us! Why don't you hear me when I talk to you? Wipe the smirk off of your face! No, come back! Come back because we, we think that you... We want you to care about us! I don't need to pay a therapist to tell me I'm unhappy! I know I'm unhappy! This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, and it is the live Saturday edition of the program. Of course, you can join us here, and you can take control of the airwaves. You can bring up whatever happens to be on your mind, although a gun control happens to be on the tips of a lot of people's tongues right now. Mark, I know that's one of the things you wanted to discuss tonight in the wake of yet another, not high school shooting this time, but a community college shooting by somebody who actually posted about it on 4chan. I don't know if you ever saw that 4chan thread, Mark, but uh, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. I saw the post, his post on the 4chan thread. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have much interest in uh, going through an entire 4chan Me neither. thread. I, just, um, <laughs> I looked at it for a brief moment and uh, wow, just shocking stuff. Well, there uh, it's a it's the the dirty little anus of the internet, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. I wonder whether they've gotten any better as a result. Do any of them feel who's they? 4chan. The 4chaners. The the, what, they There's call a lot of people on 4chan. They call so. themselves B-tards. Um, the, I'm sure there are a lot of people calling themselves a lot of different things on 4chan because there are different channels on there or whatever. Sure. And B is only one of them. I wonder what percentage of them have stopped to think about how their behavior on the internet may have fostered this particular shooting. Well, see, I don't know what fostered it. I haven't taken the time to read much about the shooter, but you've been researching uh, the case and uh, you had some things you wanted to say about it here tonight. We'll give you our toll-free numbers and also the Skype uh, here in a moment. Yeah, I, I guess you know what's what's brought to mind for me on this is the um, there's a couple of issues. I mean, this is obviously tragic and terrible. Um, I mean, you know, nobody wants to see something like this happen. Uh, but um, you know, the president came out and essentially didn't call for gun control, from what I could tell. Uh, but he did say that this was tragic. It occurs. We have to do something. It occurs um, every 
few months here in the United States, um, unlike other uh, industrialized nations, which I think it's a little a little unfair to compare the United States to, say, nations in Europe. You should probably con- compare the United States to Europe. Which is to say, it still happens, from what I can tell, more often here than it does there. Um, there are certainly, um, you know, tragic things that happen in in Europe too. But, so, what do you have to do then? If we have to do well, something, right? That's the question. Is so, a do we have to do it? Is the president correct that we have to do something? Because I concur with people who say that uh, you know our thoughts and prayers are with the the uh, the, the family is, you know, not particularly great solace as far as I'm concerned. Um. But if we, we have to do something, what is it that we have to do? What is a good solution to this? There are, um, you know, facts out there, but there seem to be a lot of contradicting facts. Uh, there's facts that say that if you have more guns in a particular area, um, that you'll have less crime. You know, areas that are right next to each other and, and things like that. That seems to be some pretty good science. But uh, there's also numbers that kind of bear out that... You know, guns don't particularly mean better crime. You can look at uh, major cities, though. Most of the major cities with the worst crime rate, they have gun restrictions. How come that's happening? Well, then how come Europe has gun restrictions and they don't have these kind of things happen? Uh, You know, to me, it doesn't really matter about the statistics. I mean, what matters is personal freedom, and you should be able to defend yourself in whatever way you want to. I think people can compare statistics all day long, and when you, of course, you know, conduct polls and you look at numbers, depending on what the intentions are of the pollsters and the statisticians, they can skew things in, in certain directions. And so it's really hard to understand, you know, comparing apples to oranges, one culture versus another culture, and, you know, where does this come from? And certainly, we're open to any of your input. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. What is it you think should be done? In my opinion, what should be done is people should be allowed to defend themselves with whatever they feel is necessary. I don't care if it's a katana sword or if it's nunchucks or a machine gun. Whatever it is that you want to carry to make you feel good uh, and to possibly protect yourself, I think you should be able to do. Well, one thing that we can see is is that, for instance, in England, now they're trying to confiscate knives. Um, they're going so far as they don't like particularly the big kitchen knives. Mm. And one kind of has to wonder. I have, uh, you know, at our house, we have a very nice set of knives that was given us for our wedding. Sure. Um, which I hear you're not supposed to do that, but it's a nice set nonetheless. Chicago cutlery. And many of these knives are pointy. What's the purpose of a pointy knife? For cut for uh, you know kitchen work particularly, uh, particularly well if you're going to cut a watermelon it's nice to have a point on your yeah knife. it's nice for a watermelon that much is true but yeah. many of these are sort of big and you can slice into the watermelon no you really want to have a point on that knife I don't like to stab to a watermelon the... it always scares me that it's going to slide off and get me in the hand while I'm holding it don't put your hand below the knife well, we, I mean, this is simple how do you kitchen hold basics. above it uh, the watermelon's huge you just put your hand on the watermelon you put it on top and then stab so it sort of in the in the center. However you want, man. I like normally just stab it? it from the top down. All right, whatever. Um, but I mean, we, this is, what we this see is, is that, what we see is is that uh, you know these like in England they're trying to stop knives now. It's you crazy. Know, there's, there's knife turn ins. Um, so once you well, say, there have been mass stabbings. I remember uh, there was uh, what was it a mass knifing in sh- uh, China where like 22 school children were knifed by some madman. Indeed, so I can understand why people think that that's going to do something, but you know you know you can't stop crazy. Somebody's going to find something with a point on it, and they're going to do damage because people are. Some people are just nuts. Would you would you would agree though that um, if you were going, if your plan was to harm a bunch of people in a classroom, mm-hmm. that you would prefer to say have a um, uh, an AK forty seven rather than a spear. Right? There's no doubt that you could do more damage with the former. So, I mean, you know, that makes some, it makes some sense. But if people... someone in the classroom has themselves a pistol that they're packing on them, then your shooting rate, uh, you know, your shooting spree is probably going to end a lot sooner. It seems like it. Uh, I think that that's another thing that needs to be addressed is here in the United States, we have a set of rules. That set of rules is called the Constitution. The Constitution says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It has been infringed about 20,000 times uh, by different state and federal laws. Um and as far as I'm concerned, those things are unconstitutional. But if you want to do away with the right to keep and bear arms, you probably should 
amend the Second Amendment to say something different than what it says. Don't like, give them I think any ideas. I think that's the place to start. They can't do it. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, that's, uh, you know, the, if you're going to play a game and that game has a set of rules, you should follow the rules. The politicians haven't been following the rules. So let's go to your calls and thoughts. Toll free number again, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Also Skype in. You can Skype the show at username lrn.fm. We got Jeff in Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how you doing? Hey, you're listening to WNNG. Go ahead. Yes, I am. Go ahead with your thoughts. You're on the air. Uh, yeah, you were talking about gun control. I was, you know, prime example is look at Switzerland. All their citizens own guns. That's why they weren't drug into World War One or World War Two. It's true. Uh, and their crime rate is practically nil. Is it all the citizens in Switzerland or just the males? No, I, believe, I think it's just the male. I'm not sure. I'm I, not 100% I've seen sure pictures of Swiss girls with automatic weapons slung mm-hmm. over their uh, backs uh, on bicycles. But something that I did read, uh, a post from uh, a Swiss person, is is that gu- guns are, you know, the guns that you're referring to, these uh, military weapons, are particularly prevalent. But the bullets aren't really allowed. You're not really allowed to keep them at the house. So um, you kind of have to go to the armory um, nearby to get the bullets. So I really? don't. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that it works as far as crime goes. It's certainly true as far as World War One and World War Two goes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, they didn't want any part of Switzerland. I know that. Jeff, anything else you want to share tonight? Yeah, I just you know we we practically thrown away the Constitution in the United States to bend to everything in. Every race, culture, creed, you know, and it's to the ridiculous point anymore. I mean, we really don't even have a constitution, do we? Yeah, you can actually go through the Bill of Rights one by one and basically cross them off the list. Uh, and there's been mo- multiple violations of the uh, the U.S. Constitution, more than we could possibly catalog. Thanks, Jeff, for your call tonight. David is in California. You're on Free Talk Live, David. Hey, howdy. Hey, um, before I start, uh, are you getting hit with uh, some of that uh, bad weather down the coast? Or are you still, oh, you talking about uh, like a hurricane or whatever? Oh, it sounds terrible down there. They're saying we're they not got down anywhere. Water. We're in New Hampshire. We hardly ever get touched by uh, hurricanes up here. It gets cold. They still talk about one that came in like 1926. Hold your thoughts, uh, David. <laughs> we'll continue here, and you can join us on Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. 855 450 free. But Mark is asking about these shootings. What can be done? Barack Obama says we should do something. I want to know what we should do. Toll free number 855 450 3733. Skype into the show. You'll sound like almost like you're in the studio with us. Skype username is lrn.fm. This is the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. This is Charlie Sunstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute and another good reason to buy a home. Here's a question I often get asked. Can someone purchase a second home without owning a primary residence? And the answer is yes. Some lenders and underwriters perceive the term second home as meaning you must own a first home. In reality, it's an indication of occupancy that's in question, not how many, if any, other properties are owned. The agencies, Fannie and Freddie, do not say that a borrower must first own another property to be able to buy a second home. And the benefit of financing a second home versus a non-owner occupied is that your interest rate could be noticeably better. At Van Dyke Mortgage, we work hard to be your trusted advisor and can help analyze your personal situation and give you advice that matters. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting VanDykeMortgage.com. That's VanDykeMortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. Dr. Joe Wallach is not your typical doctor. Both a veterinarian and naturopathic physician, Dr. Wallach asks, why does America spend more money on health care by far and yet ranks 50th in health and longevity worldwide? The doctor believes that people should be empowered with a basic understanding of nutrition, then take charge of their life to attain optimal health and longevity through nutrition, not by toxic prescription drugs that lead to side effects, requiring more toxic prescription drugs. Talk about being dependent on drug companies to our own destruction, no less. 
This is clearly a deadly recipe. Doc Wallach's message is resonating with an increasing number of Americans who are waking up to all the government and big pharma manipulation of our health care system. I like what Doc Wallach is saying and doing to enlighten people and have joined forces to help this tireless crusader spread his message. Visit GCNminerals.com and listen to Dr. Wallach's Deadly Recipes lecture. It makes a lot of sense, and I invite you to join the GCN Minerals team. Go to GCNminerals.com. That's GCNminerals.com. Keen Vench is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. Now, of course, you can bring up anything, but the uh, topic on the table at the moment is the idea of doing something about school shootings, which seem to be relatively common, maybe even more so these days uh, than in the past. I wonder about that. I wonder if they are becoming, if it feels that way, but uh, I don't know if it's true, right? Is it just that we're hearing about more of them now due to the sort of the rise of the information age as opposed to back in the late 90s with Columbine, uh, which really seemed to stand out a lot more back then than they do today? I read an article this evening as I was doing my research that claims there are 40 school shootings this year. Have you read read about 40 school shootings? <sighs> no, certainly not. And the claim that, that it crazy. seems reasonable to say that uh, we are not hearing about all the school shootings, does right? It, is it, does it count as a school shooting when uh, you know if somebody just shoots or do they have to kill somebody? I don't even know what counts. Yeah. Uh, Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Phone lines are loaded up. If you want to get in on Skype, that's wide open for you. Username there is lrn.fm. And also want to let you know about a way to get some amazing deals on Amazon. Now, you can't buy everything that you need in life on Amazon, but it's mostly darn (laughs) close to everything. Here's how you do it. You go to saveatpurse.com. That's save, A-T, saveatpurse.com, and watch their intro video. They'll show you how easy it is to get huge discounts. I'm not joking. 25%, 20%, 40%. I've gotten all of those discounts over at saveatpurse.com. My most recent two purchases were 20 and 30% off. Uh, And the the trick is you've got to pay with Bitcoin, the new cool cryptocurrency, the decentralized money not created by any bank or government. That's how you get this incredible discount from saveatpurse.com. So go and check it out when you get a chance. It only takes a moment. Saveatpurse.com. This could be a, a raise for you. If you start, you know, if you buy a lot online, uh, to get 20% off of all your purchases is 
incomparable, in my opinion. Saveitpurse.com to the phones and your calls and thoughts. Uh, actually, I think we still have David on the line here. David, are you with us? You are. In, I am indeed. Go ahead, sir. And, uh, and I, I'm old enough to remember the late 60s and all of this talk of uh, revolution. Uh, we had Richard Nixon in power. He was doing some of the most amazing criminal activities, and revolution was in the air. So everybody was talking about where to get the gun. Well, inevitably, it turned out that you were going to get some guns from organized crime. And if organized crime was out there selling guns and uh, organized crime was also in bed with the FBI, then inevitably they were going to rat you out. So the more you stayed away from guns, the more likely you were to not get, uh, not having problems. And in fact, Bob Dylan wrote that into one of his songs, uh, to live outside the law, you must be honest. So when you start looking at this whole talk of guns and revolution and the end times and all of this sort of junk, you got to realize that the old boys are just playing a fear game on us. And it's, it's the fear industry. And they're just, you know, every time the big bankers get caught in some corruption, they pretend that the apocalypse is right around the corner, and so we don't have to prosecute them because Jesus will take care of well, them. Well, there's no doubt there's a lot of fear that is propagated in the United States, and that's, of course, one of the tools that the government uses to stay in power. It wants people to be afraid. And, of course, if it can disarm people, then they'll be even more afraid, and they'll need the government, well, they, or they'll think they'll need the government uh, to be around even more ends. so. Sure they, they play do. Both ends. Sure. And as a matter of fact, did you notice InfoWars ran a piece uh, on October 1st? There's a guy, Paul Joseph Watson, ran a piece about how John McCain is now saying that we're going to have to support ISIS and Al-Qaeda in order to fight the Russians. That and sounds insane. And if you insane. know anything about yeah, it is. Absolutely it is. <laughs> the headline is McCain, Armed Syrian Rebels to Shoot Down Russian Planes. Thanks, David, for your call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You know, banning guns isn't going to solve the problem. Uh, restricting guns isn't going to solve the problem. The more restrictions come on, the more bans come on, the more it just goes into the black market. And then, as he pointed out, I think briefly there, you've got the ATF that was running guns down into Mexico for the drug cartels, right? right uh, that's yeah, recent. I mean, that's a recent example of that. Sort of uh, in collusion, let's call it that. Whatever you want to say. There, there's no doubt that if you prohibit a product, whether it's drugs, guns, people, whatever it is that you're prohibiting, uh, the, the the black market's going to pick it up. The prices are going to skyrocket, and then you know people are going to start dying in gun deals instead of drug shootings and things like that. Well, it certainly um, will uh, occur, but I mean, you you can agree that if you look at some places where these gun restrictions have been tried outside of the United States, they've got a lot less uh, crime. I don't know, uh, you know, gun violence in this way, and I don't know. I mean, is this something cultural? But is it cultural? Yeah, that's the that's the question. Because I've heard people ask, you know, they you talk about the, uh, uh, you know, the, the the Nordics and those folks and how you have very little crime there. Although, you know, there was an, obviously a glaring uh, situation a couple of years ago. That shooting at the camp or whatever yeah. it was, right? Terrible. But, um, you know, they'll look at these folks. But then you say you look at the look at the folks who are up in Wisconsin and stuff. What about that community there? Is there I mean, is it similar? And I, pro I suspect it is probably similar. Well, New Hampshireites uh, are in Vermont. Uh, you know, they're armed as hell here right. so Gun freedom here in this state and crimes among the lowest in the united states let's talk to john listening in florida and that's because there's just more freedom up here uh, john you're on free talk live with ian and mark yeah how's it going hey what's on your mind tonight well i wanted to chime in you guys said you know earlier i heard one of you say you can't stop crazy and i, I hear you guys comparing the uh crime rates and i think you guys are, are in the right direction you know but it it's the mental health that we offer to the country, you know, the, um, you know, psychological and, and uh, health care that we offer for mental health, I think is what we should be looking at and not the gun control, because it's really not the difference in, in gun laws from this area or this country to this country. I think it's what we're doing with uh, the people in those communities and what we offer for mental health in those communities that is making those you know, the big differences between what You're saying happens. the mental health services are failing, that they're not, uh, or that they're not connecting yeah. with the right people, or mental what? Health, I think mental health services go hand in hand with some of the issues we're having with shootings in America today. Yeah, I think that it's uh, think undeniably it connected. 
I, I do wonder to myself. Are we talking about like over, you know, over diagnosing and prescribing med- medications? What I'm, I'm not real clear what you mean. Well, I think that uh, we need to, I guess, well, obviously, offer more services for people who are having mental health issues. Uh, give them a give them a place that they can go. I don't think there's enough places that um, people don't have enough opportunity to get the help they need. But I also think we need to look at people who do have mental health issues and possibly, um, you know, just because you have a, um, uh, a, you know, you've committed a crime, you can't, you can't purchase a gun. Uh, but if you have certain sort of mental health issues, maybe we should be, uh, you know, comparing and analyzing those statistics with people who, who own and buy guns as well. The um, one wonders how you get this information. How do you find out um, that somebody is, uh, you know, has whatever mental health issue it is? Because when you say, "Hey, you know what? Turn when it's when you've been diagnosed. Come, come to us for some mental health." And then when we diagnose you in whichever way we decide to diagnose you, if that diagnosis is uh, among our list of diagnoses uh, that uh, disallow you from having weapons, then you will then not be able to have them. So please come to us and be disallowed from having a gun. <laughs> Thanks, John, for your call tonight. Toll free number tonight 855 free that's 855-450-3733 i'm not okay with that i understand a lot of people think that on the surface that sounds good uh restricting those who have mental health issues but who decides what should be restricted who should be restricted what different issues prohibit one from having a gun global warming covertly describes the effects of iron poisoning CO2 is iron poison blood types and is the body's defense mechanism to buffer the oxygen iron attracts. CO2 in blood and blood type prevalences are used as false evidence for global warming and is the setup for the greatest fraud in history. The healthy blood type AB is on the Shroud of Turin and is their DNA proof they are his Christ. For further information, unveilingthem.com, U-N-V-E-I-L-I-N-G them.com. No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of 
where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It is Free Talk Live, live Saturday edition. You can join us on the radio waves and the internet, satellites, etc. You can join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, Skype on in here. Skype username is lrn.fm. You do need to, uh, to add us on your contact list before you can Skype us. Uh, that's a real easy thing to do. And then once you're added, you're good to go from that point forward. And something else, if you're online and you care about privacy, you need to know about Pro XPN. It's a virtual private network, and they encrypt your online data before it reaches your Internet service provider, which means that your ISP will not know what you're doing online as soon as you start using Pro XPN. That means they can't data mine you. They can't sell your data to other companies or turn it over to the government. So go to ProXPN.com, and actually, if you go to ProXPN.com slash AMP and you pay with Bitcoin, you'll get the best deal that we've ever talked about for ProXPN. Our old code, FTL50, for those of you without Bitcoin, that'll get you 50% off the regular monthly price for the lifetime of your account when you buy an annual account with code FTL50. So that's still good, and that gets you the service at less than the price of a cup of coffee uh, every single month. Which is awesome. But if you go to proxpn.com slash amp, pay with Bitcoin, you'll get two years of ProXPN for less than $50 worth of Bitcoin, and $5 of your purchase will go to Free Talk Live's AMP program, which helps spread the message of liberty. So the guys over at ProXPN love freedom, and that's why they're on board here with Free Talk Live. So if you do too, go to proxpn.com slash amp and use Bitcoin to pay. You'll get a huge savings. You don't have Bitcoin, just use code FTL50 and get that 50% off. ProXPN.com slash AMP. As we go to your phone calls and thoughts, the question tonight is uh, so far about guns and what can be done. More specifically, what can be done about the school shootings that seem to be more prevalent than ever. And that is uh, ultimately the question. I say I lean towards more freedom. I don't care what the statistics are. I don't want to compare one country to another because it's hard to compare cultures and you know why one country has guns and they don't have school shootings and another country has guns and they do have them. Uh, one state versus another, et cetera. Well, I mean, I, I do care about uh, comparing statistics and things like that. Why? I mean, if you could show that you know in some areas having more guns re- had more crime, would that want, make you want to ban guns? If, um, if, if I could show that red shirts caused significantly more harm than blue shirts um i would be willing i'd be in very interested in that uh, the statistics on that and i'd sure wa- but if that were the case i would only want to promote the idea that that causes harm and try to encourage people to not wear the more dangerous shirts not force them you need the to information first okay yeah well you need the information first Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Let's go to your calls and thoughts we've got frank he's in indianapolis listening to wibc hey frank how you doing? What's on your mind tonight, Frank? Go ahead. Well, you know, I think that there is, um, it's very important for us to be more solution-minded about this. One thing that I've thought about for a few years is the requirement of training, because that doesn't um, obfuscate the, the um, freedom of owning a gun, but requiring training. And it's interesting when you just observe that people who hunt, for example, who in most states that allow for hunting actually do have to go through training, you also find that you're probably never going to find a case where somebody who is a hunter um, was abusive with guns. Does that kind of make sense? 
Well, um, I think that uh, I, I think that hunters become more familiar, but there are cases where hunters shoot each other. Um, I mean, these these happen every single year on purpose or accident. An accident. I mean, well, you're just talking about abusive. Yes. Abusive includes ac- accidents to me. Eh, I don't think well, so. Well, I, I wouldn't classify that. I okay. would say that an accidental shooting is very different. Okay. But yeah. something else that I think is very important, a lot of people don't really understand the history of this, is that the Second Amendment actually does not give us the right to bear arms. It is a provision that was given to us to be able to form a militia to oppose a tyrannistic government. Now, that being said, I am for people being able to own, own arms. But if you walked into a restaurant and everybody had a sidearm, wouldn't you rather than being trained and, and properly understand? Back in the 1800s, 1700s, when people wanted to eat, they had to kill their own animals. So kids started at a very young age learning how to uh, store a gun, hold a gun, all of those things. And I don't think that it's unreasonable for either side of the aisle to really look hard at that as being a realistic solution because it still gives you the availability to own a gun but at the same time you know that if that person like the somebody in the school you guys were talking about earlier if they own a gun somebody comes in shooting you at least know that they're trained well enough to actually know how to shoot that person as opposed to i don't think it's a bad thing to encourage people to train with their firearms i mean certainly anybody who's responsible will will want to do that anyway because you you are if you're not proficient if you've never fired the thing before you're going to be useless if you actually do need it so you do need to go out and and practice Also, if we're talking about mental health issues here um you know training uh you know the the drive people to do this stuff the training is only going to make for better mass shooters (laughs) that's true thanks frank for your call tonight i appreciate it um, but I wouldn't force people to. And that's what government does. You know, when you talk about, well, both sides of the aisle should get on. Well, when both sides of the aisle get on s- the side of whatever, that means that they're going to increase the government's control over something. When you come to s- state representatives or U.S. reps or whatever, and you, pr- you pitch an idea like this, they're going to use force. They're going to threaten people who don't want to go through their approved training processes. And then that also, I think, begs the question of who would then decide what is an appropriate training uh, mechanism? Because there are different ways to train with firearms. And there's some basics that obviously you want, you want to learn that I think I've any gun people say that only police should have them because they're the ones that are trained. But, but the point I'm making here, Mark, is that who determines what the correct training methods are? There sure. are different styles, if you will, of training with firearms. And so, you know, I'm sure there's certain trainers who would want to have their styles approved and they'll be on the OK list. But what if somebody's got a, a method of training that's a little uncouth or a little unusual or whatever, but they swear by it? You know, if well, the government doesn't then, approve it, then they're out of business. Right. If you don't have, um, you know, once you institute a monopoly, you're not going to see growth or um, innovation in a particular yeah. area. I'd like to address the issue that the Second Amendment somehow has uh, is, is solely for militias. Sure. This is absolute, utter nonsense. Um, it just it is simply not true. You can look at the writings of the time. You can look at what's going on, for instance, in the New Hampshire Constitution, which is a constitution that is older than the United States Constitution. Yeah, I think it's Article 22, right? Uh, no, 2A oh, is 2A. what it is. All persons have the right to keep and bear arms. I like this one better because it's more clear. Have the right to keep and bear arms in defense of themselves, their families, their property. Yep. Does that sound like a militia to you? No. No. That sounds like an individual gun owner owning a gun to protect themselves, their families, and their property, and the state. Now, that sounds like a militia, yeah. but you have the right to carry, you know, have the right to keep and bear arms for that for those reasons. Toll free number 855-453-855-450-3733. Skype in at username lrn.fm. Let's continue with Slim in Walpole, New Hampshire. Slim, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Hey, uh, great topic tonight. Go ahead. And as far as what we should do is we should do nothing but enforce the thousands of laws on the books uh, and maybe repeal a few of them. How about repealing all thousands of them? I mean, isn't you know the right to bear arms enough? Yeah, but that's not going to happen. Well, I mean, if you don't believe it can happen, then you're probably right. It probably can't happen. But, you know, what if, for well, instance— I would, li- I would love to see it happen. How about New Hampshire given... secedes from the United States? Oh, then we'll have, a lot, we'll have a lot less gun laws at that point. <laughs> well, that, uh, that's not a bad idea. See? Thank you very thing, much. I appreciate it. Uh, one that. other thing I wanted to, to bring up is gun-free zones. They had one security guard on campus down there at that school, and he was unarmed. This does not make any sense. 
Doesn't seem to me. It doesn't make much sense to me to have a security guard there um, in a gun-free zone without some kind of weapon. I'm with you, Slim. Exactly. Thanks for your call tonight. Are you? Uh, by the way, just a quick question: You a New Hampshire native? Yes. Uh, uh, no, not a native. I I moved to New Hampshire eight years ago. Glad to hear that you support the idea of seceding. I think we'll be talking more about that in the future. Thanks for the call tonight, Slim. I appreciate it. Uh, by the way, if you want to learn more about that, if you are a secession advocates. There's the New Hampshire. There's the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence. There are also other states that have uh, secessionist groups. There's uh, there's one in Texas, an active one in Vermont. I think Hawaii's even uh, got one as well. Of course, Alaska, sure. State of Jefferson in North California. 855 450 freeze our toll free number. What to do about school shootings? You can share your thoughts with us here on Free Talk Live. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. Want gold but also want to stay digital and decentralized on the Bitcoin blockchain? Anthem Vault, providing trusted, world-class vaulting, has your answer with Hayek Gold. Digital, spendable gold inspired by economist and free market philosopher F.A. Hayek. Each Hayek is worth one gram of gold and is available right now at AnthemVault.com. Sign up today at AnthemVault.com with promo code FREEDOM to earn six months of free storage and 5% off all margins for life. Hayek Gold at AnthemVault.com. Get yours today. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists, get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Okay, open your mouth and say, ah. Ah. When your child has a sore throat, you need to know when to get help. The doctor recommended Say Ah Sore Throat Exam is your solution. The scientifically designed oral retractor offers a clear view of the throat, relaxing the tongue and minimizing gag reflex. Compare with a medical grade chart, website, and app. Then you'll know just what to tell your doctor. A wellness plan in your hands in minutes. Go to sayahahnow.com. Sayahnow.com, the new mainstay for every family's first aid kit. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is your Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $22 higher at $1,136 per ounce, and silver is $0.52 cents higher at $15.06 per ounce. It looks like precious metals have finally made the split from the stock market. We have plenty of Australian silver spiders and kangaroos in stock. Give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. 
This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can join us here toll-free. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Of course, you can join us online. We've got Skype, so Skype on in here at username lrn.fm. Uh, coming up October 29th and 30th, Mark, you are not going to be in our Keene, New Hampshire studios. No, You'll I am not. Vegas. The show will be live from Las Vegas, uh, October 29th and 30th. It's from the beautiful D Hotel in downtown Las Vegas, as opposed to the Strip. Um, it's they're one of the few hotels that I've heard of that take Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And this is a Bitcoin conference, the Bitcoin Investor Conference, and it's going to have a lot of big names: Trace Mayer, Stephanie, Dr. Stephanie Murphy, uh, Tone Vase, Paul Pui. Some of the biggest names in Bitcoin will be in attendance, including myself. I'll be hopefully doing some emceeing while I, uh, of course, do the the show. The first time we've ever done it live from Las Vegas. Also the first ever Bitcoin Investor Conference. Yeah, that's true. It's always good to get in the ground floor on these uh, things. And, you know, there's going to be lots of ways to make money in Bitcoin. So if you're interested, go to BitcoinInvestor.com and get your tickets. It's Bitcoin Investor. Dot com and come out and hang out with me. It'll be our first time doing it in Vegas, and I'm excited. Bitcoininvestor.com. It's October 29th and 30th. That's coming up. That's right. D Hotel in Vegas. All right. Let's go to your calls and thoughts talking about the, uh, the school shootings that just seem to keep coming and what can, if anything, be done about it. We'll hear your thoughts, and we'll go to Terry listening in Indiana to WIBC-FM in Indianapolis. Hey, Terry. How you doing, guys? What's on your mind tonight? Go ahead. So many things to say in so little time. Um, you know, it, it it is a difficult situation, especially if you're talking about the schools. Um, I think we all know uh, how many of these kids at these colleges are immature, still trying to find their way, out partying. I understand a reticence to arm some of these kids. Um, but, you know, you had a teacher there who was ex-military, who sacrificed himself, uh, lucky to live through it. Was Chris Mintz a teacher? Uh, I I believe that's what I read. He was at least, um, uh, you know, he was at at the very least, he was ex-military. And one kind of wonders, this is a community college, so you'll have people of different ages there at any given time. So, yeah, I mean, and I think in a lot of states you can't get a concealed carry permit until you're 21. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, and, and that probably should be, Maybe. Uh, but then that still leaves you with a gun free zone essentially, uh, which probably the answer is, is to allow any adult of, of age to carry on a college campus. And, and, you know, there's been a recent movement here of, of, uh, allowing high school and elementary school teachers who want to, uh, be a person of protection, uh, that have to go through training. They're allowed to carry on the school campus. Now I got to say that's, that's where field. training, that's where mandatory training makes sense. If if it's for yep. a job and you know you want to carry on your 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 boss's property in this case the school's property, then if they require training, that is completely legitimate. If it's part of your uh, your job, but to to force training on everybody, I don't think forcing people to do things is a good idea. And I also think that 18, 19, 20 year olds, you know, they're legally able to buy a gun or or possess a gun. They should be able to to carry it. Well, interestingly, a and constant- I won't and I won't argue that point. I won't I won't debate that one with you because. Because I could go either way. You know, I know some really responsible kids that age. I know some really irresponsible ones. But that kind of goes with the territory. Yeah, I mean, I know uh, some 50-year-olds that are irresponsible. Everybody wants to, yeah, everyone wants to fixate on the gun as the problem. Well, let's if we would outlaw all cars, look at the reduction in drunk driving uh, deaths. Terry, good That's call tonight, answer. man. I appreciate hearing from you. Thank you. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. From the DailyBeast.com. Uh, 30-year-old Chris Mintz, student and army vet. He was uh, shot five times while charging at the gunman in an effort to save others. He does live currently, um, and he's likely to live, although he's probably going to have to receive therapy for walking and that sort of thing. Let's go to Malachi, listening in Indianapolis to WIBC-FM. Hey, Malachi, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? 
Well, I want to talk to you. I mentioned earlier, I don't want to go too far back in the show, but you talked about who's to choose who can and can't own guns by mentally defective people. And it actually, in, on the, the form, I own a gun store in Indianapolis, and um, on the form, the 4473, it actually has a question. Have you been adjudicated mentally defective? And there are laws on the books that if a judge has adjudicated the person mentally defective, they can't own guns. There are state laws in Indiana for that, as well as uh, local local ordinances and federal laws for it. So it's already in place, and it's just something that needs to be enforced. Well, Do you think, because um, I, I suffer, uh, maybe is not the right term, but I, I have to deal with a uh, felony conviction. So I live in a town. We don't actually have a police uh, force in our town. There are state police and that sort of thing if, uh, if something goes awry. But I can tell you, it's a pretty well-armed town. Um, I am disallowed legally from owning a firearm because of my felony conviction. And I kind of, it feels like, you know, they never give you an opportunity to earn this back. Yeah, I could go to the governor of the state of Florida and say, hey, pretty please. Didn't work last time. Right, you know, and pay thousands of dollars and do whatever to uh, to get a pardon to be able to carry a firearm. But I, I get the impression the governments just don't want people to carry them, and so they're not going to be uh, falling all over themselves to let me carry them. And this is kind of what I— I disagree 100%. And, and actually, in the state of Indiana, they have something in place where you can have your felony conviction conviction expunged after a certain amount of time if you've been a productive member of society. You probably do have to hire a lawyer and spend a little bit of money to do it, but everything in life costs money these days. We seem to have learned that. And you can have your gun rights restored. And all you have to do is go in. You have to show that you haven't gotten in trouble and usually has to be a certain number of years, and you can get your gun rights restored. And you could probably actually do that in Florida it also depends on what the felony is, the level of it, and how long ago it was. There's many, many years. Um, but, you know, one of the things, when, when I did check on it, it was going to be thousands of dollars. And I kind of have to ask myself, hey, do I want, uh, you know, I don't know, a tractor or something like that for my farm? Or whether I want to, uh, you know, get the government's permission to, to have a firearm. And so far, the answer has been, I'd rather have the stu- real stuff that I can use. Would the felony have to be expunged from the state in which it was garnered? Or yes. could New Hampshire sort of override it? Nope, um, nor could the president. Uh, the, United, the president of the United States cannot uh, pardon somebody who is convicted on the state level. Malachi, thanks for your call and thoughts. I appreciate it. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-453, 855-450-3733. Uh, Skype is also available. Skype username, lrn.fm. Let's go to Ronnie, also in Indy. You're on Free Talk Live, Ronnie. Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie. Sorry about that. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they should consider putting metal detectors in these schools so that anyone coming in with a gun can be detected. Before they have they, that. They, get they have that in, in metal schools. Metal detectors? In some schools, in but school. not, in, not in this not community, in community college. college. And it wouldn't be possible if you think about it. At least the community college I went to was a bunch of freestanding buildings, yeah. and there were several, Very open. Oh, several, yeah. several different ways well, into the campus. Well, that wouldn't be possible in, in, a, in a situation like that. But, but the ones but, that they can do— <laughs> They should think about Ronnie, going. Ronnie, I got a, and, I've got a counter argument though. There was a school. I think mm-hmm. it was in the Boston area. I apologize for not knowing exactly where, but we did have a news story here on Free Talk Live in the past about one of these schools that had the metal detectors. It had the armed guards even uh, in the school. They had all kinds of security measures in place. And what happened was it was I think it was a charter school or became a charter school. And then when new management came in. They decided to get rid of all of that security stuff, all the entire security apparatus. They got rid of the metal detectors, got rid of the armed guards, and they stopped the school from basically being a prison-like location. And what do you know? All of the, you know, nearly all of the issues with violence that the school had cleared up. Is it possible mm-hmm. that if you treat students like inmates, they're more likely to behave like them? No, I don't think nope. so. Okay. Because no, I don't think so. Uh, because um, just like gun control, um, the people that are going to abide by the laws are the lawful people. The people that want to do something illegal are going to go on the streets and get them a gun. They, they're not going to walk into a place, fill out an application, and get a legal gun. You can buy guns on the streets. Guns are everywhere. Sure, so, but I what mean, does that have to, to do with the example I gave you of how a school that was rife with violence? Uh, became less mm-hmm. so violent, dramatically less so, once they got rid of their security apparatus. 
What do you think? Uh, so? that do you, might be, how do you explain that? I think that might have been coincidental. Because, just a coincidence, uh, huh? It's uh, possible. Yeah, I, I do think that that was just coincidental because um, you, the more uh, fail safe that you have in place, the less likely someone in, is going to come in and and do some wrong. I don't know about um, you, Roni, but I don't want to send my kids to any place where they're treated like an inmate. Thanks for the call tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Maybe they should all bend over and cough uh, when, you know, strip down and bend over and cough before they get in. They did that to me in jail. With colleges the knives out. having uh, classes at different times of the day, I can't imagine how um, it would work with the... Uh, well, she was talking about high school. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. And those, you know, certainly school shootings are happening there probably more often uh, than at colleges. This is Free Talk Live. We got more on the way. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, October 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.26 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,138 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $241. Antiwar.com reports the Monday loss of the major northern Afghan city of Kunduz was one of the biggest losses in years in the ongoing war, and while on Thursday officials were claiming they'd retaken the city already, the reality is that the Taliban still holds most of the city heading into the weekend. In the grand scheme of things, Afghan officials are trying to downplay the situation and insisting that they were able to hold their own in fighting against the Taliban, even if they did not always win. But locally, the question is still how they lost to the Taliban despite outnumbering them. Afghan police and soldiers both have opinions on this matter. As is often the case in the wake of a military defeat, everyone is trying to shift responsibility. Afghan soldiers insist the police were cowards who surrendered quickly while police maintain that the Afghan troops, despite having much better weaponry and more training, were soft and hid in their base for most of the fight. This effort to shift blame goes all the way up the chain of command with higher ranking officials officials blaming the lack of reinforcements or the lack of additional weapons shipments for the losses, but the reality is that no one seemed to believe Kunduz could be lost until the moment that it was. 
You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates, like Namecheap and Amazon, at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. Or you can shop directly from FPP with Bitcoin in the Bitcoin store. That's shop.fppradio.com. UPI reports Education Secretary Arne Duncan plans to step down in December from the post he has held for seven years. Duncan, a member of President Barack Obama's original cabinet, told the White House on Friday he will be returning to Chicago to be closer to his family. He will be replaced by John B. King Jr., a former New York State Commissioner and recently appointed Deputy Secretary at the department. Duncan has clashed with teachers' unions, parents, and Congress during the time in office over issues that include testing and school privatization. Duncan's wife Karen and his two children recently moved back to Chicago where they lived before he took the post. When the family moved in July, Duncan's spokeswoman said he intended to commute to Chicago on weekends. Duncan's spokeswoman Dory Nolt said Secretary Duncan remains committed to his work in the cabinet and will continue to serve at the pleasure of the president. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a U.S. district judge on Friday ordered Arkansas to continue payments to Planned Parenthood for its treatment of three women who challenged Governor Asa Hutchinson's directive cutting off Medicaid reimbursements to the organization. The order applied only to the case of the three plaintiffs, although the judge did suggest that Planned Parenthood as an organization might be able to successfully challenge the cutoff. Judge Christine Baker held that the three women, identified in court papers as Jane Doe's, had demonstrated that they would incur ir- irreparable harm should they not be able to access contraceptive care and other services through Planned Parenthood. The preliminary injunction issued by the judge on Friday follows a temporary restraining order she put in place two weeks ago. Hutchinson, a Republican, said in a statement that the ruling was limited to the three women and that he would direct the state health department to prohibit funding to Planned Parenthood consistent with the court's ruling. Planned Parenthood gets about $500 million annually in federal funds, largely in reimbursement under Medicaid, the government's health care program for the poor. In Arkansas, a reaction from social conservatives to the judge's move was swift. Planned Parenthood said almost all of its work in the state covered services other than abortions. A spokesman for the state attorney general said no decision had been made regarding an appeal of the ruling. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A new study finds most high school graduates are woefully unprepared for high school, and a bag of flour has a slave auction on its front. This is The Onion Week in Review. This week, Secretary of Labor Thomas Perez unveiled plans to boost the nation's struggling job market by giving every unemployed American a self-serve yogurt shop, saying that the frozen yogurt business model is robust, profitable, and that they've pretty much exhausted other options. Perez explained that owners will be responsible for stocking their own topping bars with items such as Oreo crumbles, minced kiwi, cash and gummy bears. Estimates indicate the country will need to increase daily consumption of frozen yogurt by approximately 2.3 gallons per person in order for the new stores to remain solvent. And in this week's local news, something is apparently going on between a mom and her friend. In other news, Taco Bell warns its employees against ever exposing their skin to its food. A sad man tears two bananas off of a larger bunch, and a new report finds everything you've ever wanted has been right in front of you all along. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, of course. You can join us here. And you can bring up anything, though we have been talking quite a bit about the idea of what can be done regarding school shootings. They're happening, uh, the most recent one was a community college. Normally you expect this to happen at a high school. Uh, I don't know how often they happen at community colleges. I remember the Virginia Tech one that happened a little while back. I don't know if that's considered a no, I don't community think so. college. 
Uh, but still, it is a college. I wouldn't you, think of it that way. Anyway. You don't generally hear those stories. And uh, we had a caller a moment ago suggesting, well, metal detectors. Well, you can't really do that with a college. Almost every college campus I've seen is not an indoor college campus. Uh, I, even here in New Hampshire, where it's cold, you know, they still make you go outside to get from <laughs> class to class. Yeah, I um, I, I don't think in a uh, community college it's going to work at all. But even with metal detectors at schools, it doesn't make me feel comfortable. The idea of putting in a bunch of metal detectors in. I think about the school that I went to and, you know, the, now... That place is full of metal detectors and, you know, it has limited ex exits that you can get out um, without setting off an alarm and just a variety of things. And um, certainly schools change significantly and it just it just doesn't feel right um, to me. Well, that's what I was saying. I don't have kids, but if I did, first of all, I'd, I'd want to unschool them and not send them to a, a facility. But if I were going to send them to a facility of some sort, maybe there was some really great school that I really wanted to send them to for some reason. Uh, I cer certainly would not want them shaken down every single day just to go to class. That's horrible. That's treating them like an inmate. And, of course, there are a lot of uh, comparisons that one can make between schools, specifically government schools, uh, these sort of institutional places, and facilities that house uh, inmates and prisoners. I mean, jails and schools. There's in I remember in Sarasota, Florida, where I grew up, the, the elementary school I went to, which was one of the better ones in Sarasota, it was a magnet school as they called them, uh, it looked exactly like the old jail. Turns <laughs> out the designer, the architect, was the same guy. Same fella. You know? uh, our toll-free number is 855-450-3733. Is it worth it to you to, to have your kids treated like an inmate in order to feel like they're safe? I mean, I'm sorry, is a metal detector going to detect a plastic shiv? Is that going to happen? So well, obviously, look, I, I, I disagree with this particular argument that if you can't do something that will stop everything, you therefore should not do anything. Um, I mean, that's a that's not that's an argument. I'm not making that argument, but you know, as soon as kids start sneaking in plastic shivs into school, then they're going to get pat downs on the way in. I mean, it's just then the the security state just increases and increases. Before you know it, you, you're being locked down in the school, you know, in each room, and then they, they've got the bell that goes off, unlocks the doors, and things like that. I mean, this it would turn into even more of a prison. Well, people are describing uh, government schools, especially the big ones, as day prisons already. That's I mean, true. There's no, no doubt about that. I'm not arguing that point. I just think that, uh, you know, you've been charged now by your president, ladies and gentlemen, to Find a solution to this problem of uh, mass shootings at schools. This isn't happening in countries around the world, which, of course, I think it's unfair to compare the United States to, say, each individual country in Europe. Much f more fair to, say, compare it to Europe itself, because it's about the, si the, the sizes are similar. But nonetheless, um, you know, people are saying something must be done. Well, that doesn't mean – should something be done or shouldn't something be done? And if something should be done, what is that thing? Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Also, you can Skype in here. Skype username, lrn.fm. Let's go to Brian, listening in Indiana to WIBC-FM. Hey, Brian. Hey. hey. Um, I had some thoughts on the uh, um, just kind of the, the whole idea of comparing the U.S. to other countries. Yeah. Um, a lot of people bring up the Swiss, the Swiss thing, and I had actually uh, – you guys made a couple of comments about that. You know, that, that really does come down to the culture of them. Um, and while some people try to say that they're given guns, that they're supposed to have guns, that's not the case. But it is, it is their, uh, more like a civic duty there. Um, a very, the vast majority of people end up serving in what is basically their militia. Mm -hmm. And um, they can buy their service arm. It's not given to them, but they can buy their service arm if they want to. Um, and, and that happens, but... Uh, that's only about 50% of the guns. 50% of the guns are still um, uh, privately held. The people just don't purchase. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's not uh, the, the 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 ammo thing um, is only the only thing that that they can't have is military ammo, military spec ammo. Okay. They can have their own ammo and they can keep it at home. All right. Um, but they can't. Their their culture is uh, you don't have a gun for self defense. That's not. And in fact, if you go to get a permit for a gun in Switzerland. If self-defense is your reason, you really have to make a compelling case about it. Um, they have it for ammo. I mean, for um, for hunting, for uh, for collectibles, and that sort of thing. Um, have you lived there? Then, it's, it sounds uh, like you've done a lot of research. 
I have. Well, I have. Just I'm I'm uh, uh, a gun nut, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. and uh, um, end up just kind of. It's been a fascinating thing to me. Yeah, I, sure. I defend it quite a bit online. Um, and and with the UK thing, that's that's the one that that you know we never get a whole picture of that. When you when you hear people talk about the UK and and how low their gun violence is. Look up, and I and I'm apologize, I don't know the specifics, but you can Google it and see easily, is look up the rape statistics and how much that has grown uh, exponentially in the last number of Did you of say years. the rape statistics? Uh, rape, rape statistics. Okay. Yeah, if you Google uh, UK, uh, the amount of rapes that they have, um, uh, and, and the... Um, uh, so you're you saying talking, murder you know, has gone that? down, rape has gone up since uh, gun... Rape has gone, yeah, rape has gone up and just... Um, just uh, violence in general. Yep. It's not gun for gun violence. In many cases, uh, these laws appear to be nice. victim disarmament laws. Sure. And that's certainly yeah, the truth absolutely. on college campuses in the United States as well. There's uh, big problems with rape on college campuses, but, you know, people on college campuses can't defend themselves with uh, with guns either. Thanks, Brian, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you, and thanks yeah. for the info. Uh, Toll-free number for you to join us here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. When it comes to crime, oftentimes you don't know what's, like, you don't know you're going to be mugged until you're knocked over the head. Um, you don't know you're going to be raped until you're, you know, grabbed and drug off into... Um, um, you know, a corner someplace. So guns can be, in those circumstances, relatively useless, right? Mm-hmm. Like a weapon, whatever that weapon might be, that you can't put your hand on quickly. Especially if it gets turned against you. Yeah, but that that happens. Yeah. Um, you know, I... It, but people I, should be able to take those risks. They should be free to make those choices. That is, that, that's a freedom, right? Like, a, the, you know, there's a freedom to defend yourself and a a gun, a handgun, is a is a tool to do that. Let's talk to Darren. He is also in Indianapolis. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Darren. Hey, guys. What's up? What's on your mind tonight? Hey, um, enjoying your guys' show. I uh, just want to say something real quick about sure. gun-free zones. I've been thinking a lot about this. Obviously, my best-case scenario would be to eliminate gun-free zones. But I do Can't think, do that. Private property. Uh, were, yeah, Not exactly. on school campuses. I, I get that. I get that. Here, here's what I would say, though. Private property, fine. I believe businesses have... Free choice and so on and so forth. I get that. Here's what I would say, though. If you're going to require people to not be allowed to carry firearms onto your property, then you should be responsible for taking you. You should be responsible for taking responsibility for their security. There's a good argument for that. I mean, if you're removing their ability to protect themselves. Yeah, exactly. I think if you, you know, freedoms come with come with responsibilities, and as a business, I don't agree. It's your responsibility as the customer to uh, choose. And choose wisely. If you want to go to a place where the business owner is a pacifist and you know they're not going to do a damn thing if somebody comes in and starts blasting, that's your risk as the customer and it should not be the responsibility of the business owner in one iota. Too. Yeah. I, I actually disagree. I disagree wholeheartedly. I think that if you're going to open a business and you're going to require people to put, put their self at risk to walk into your business, no one's required to walk into your business. It's a you know, it's an open market to some extent in that way. I'm not forced to go and shop at Walmart. I'm not forced to go and shop at Target. I can choose where I want to go. I see what you're saying is a nice thing to do. That would be great for a business owner to provide security services for an unarmed place. I get you there, but it shouldn't be a requirement. They shouldn't be forced to do so. Now, here's the other thing I would say about schools related to the same discussion. Um I don't understand why this school, and I'm, I have three degrees, so I've I've been on a plethora of different size campuses and kinds of campuses. With the shootings that are happening at campuses in the United States of America, uh, one, I, obviously I disagree with the fact that the school was a, had a rule that it was a gun-free zone. But the second thing is this. Uh, why does this school not have armed security on campus? That's a good question. Thank you, Darren, for your call tonight. They're scared of guns. Toll-free <laughs> number. Obvious. 855-450-FREE or Skype in at Skype username LRN.FM. Money, power, and respect are all yours at credit successsecretsrevealed.com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit, did your nerves spike? You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine. 
so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. You're fired. According to the Small Business Administration, 75% of small businesses plan to eliminate jobs or reduce workers' hours to part-time. You're You're fired. fired. According to Gallup, the unemployment rate recently jumped to nearly 9%, and the underemployment rate hit a staggering 17.9%. You're fired. One out of three young adults and one out of two recent college graduates are underemployed. Hello, I'm Keith Abel, a pharmacist and a home business entrepreneur. In 2011, I became one of those statistics myself. Instead of looking for another job in corporate America, I joined Dr. Joel Wallet, the dead doctors don't lie. We're creating steady incomes for ourselves and would like to show you how to do the same. If you want to supplement your current income, replace your income, so you don't have to become one of the statistics, then give me a call toll-free at 866-257-3105. 866-257-3105. You're fired. Don't wait till you hear those words. Start creating an extra income today. 866-257-3105. Money, power, and respect are all yours at Credit Success Secrets Revealed. Dot com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit, did your nerves spike? You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine. So you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.LRN.FM or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.LRN.FM. That's apps.LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. That's 855-450-3733. And we have Skype. Skype username tonight is LRN.FM. What would you do when a bizarre occult army calling itself The Trust invades your sleepy little mountain town? Find out what James Contrell... Hopefully you have a gun. (laughs) Matter of fact, there are lots of guns in this comic book. Uh, James Contrell, a big-hearted country boy with a crappy job who's learned to live without dreams, what he does. Because sometimes the guy who's learned to live without dreams might be the best suited to handle a nightmare. Read the action comedy graphic novel James vs. the New World Order by Brandon Bitros, illustrated by J. Matthew Root, the first in what's estimated to be about a five-volume, 24-issue series. So if this intrigues you, 
Go and pre-order now because what they're trying to do is they're trying to raise money for uh, artwork and coloring and production and distribution, all of that stuff ahead of time. You're going to get your comic. They're going to make this happen. Um, they are, you know, they just want to pay for it in advance if they can do such a thing. So James versus the New World Order dot com. You can contribute right there at James versus it's James V S. James VS, the New World Order dot com. It looks like it's going to be great. You can see the artwork there, and that's really what it comes down to with a graphic novel. All right, so what to do about the gun, or these shootings, these school shootings, high school, college. If you want to share your thoughts, you can join us here. You can also bring up anything that's on your mind. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. As we go to Scott, listening in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, to WKBK. Hey, Hello Scott. There. Hi there. Hi there, guys. How you doing tonight? Welcome, sir. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I've got a pragmatic solution. I'd love Why to hear it. Don't, what, well, now, putting firearms in classrooms probably not the best solution. A, we don't want more government employees carrying weapons. And B, I've met enough school teachers to know that I don't want them carrying weapons. However, we could do a non-lethal weapon such as a taser. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's employed improperly, it doesn't seem like well, it's the, the, the worst thing, thing in the world. Organizations, an organization like the NRA has a vested interest in making sure that there are no more school shootings. Because every time there's a school shooting... There's this public outcry to increase gun um, control. So the NRA already has the capacity to train people in the safe use of tasers. They've got, they've got educators. They've got ways that they could do this, and they have a financial vested interest in stopping the school shooting. So we could do this without government intervention. People like us who are really into liberty could also contribute to a program like that. We wouldn't have to make it compulsory that every teacher has to have a taser. But anyone that wants to have one in their class and have the requisite training to go along with it should be allowed to. Then if a shooter's walking into a school and has no idea, there might be 20 or 30 people with tasers in there, they're not going to do it because these guys want to go in, shoot a bunch of people, and end up being killed by a cop. But they don't want to end up writhing in pain on the floor in a puddle of their own urine. Which certainly is a possibility. I think it's not. I think it's a pretty good solution, all in all. If you know, taser, bear spray, a variety of these things, um, they they're as practical. Even rubber bullets, um, they're as as practical as arming teachers, which is what some people are saying. And as an extra side benefit, if those ornery little kids don't know if their teachers pack the taser, you think they might pay attention a little more? It, well, at the very least, it might give them <laughs> pause, right? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I want to give Mr. Edge any more trouble. He looks like he's hanging by a thread. He's, he's twitchy. <laughs> Hey, thanks for your call tonight, Scott. I appreciate hearing from you. You can join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Robert. I am totally unqualified to be a teacher. Robert totally. Robert is in Bellows Falls, Vermont. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Robert. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Sure, sir. Hey, you know, I was just thinking about what you guys were talking about earlier in terms of, uh, you know, doing away with all gun laws in the United States. And... You know, I'm thinking that I I like the idea of what the president said in the past about, you know, about marijuana laws. Let the states decide what they want to do about the marijuana laws. Well, that same thing could be applied with gun laws. Yeah, for sure. Let the states decide what they want to do with gun laws. It's pretty much what's happening, though. I mean, as far as, yes, the federal government overrides and and, uh, they've applied a lot of gun laws to all the states. But certainly there are vast differences between state gun laws. I mean, New York is a terrible place to be. Uh, California, a terrible place to be if you're a gun owner. Uh, You can barely be a gun owner in those those places. Places like Vermont and New Hampshire, it's relatively easy to... uh, to own guns unless you're a felon and so uh, I, I but i agree with you roll back all the federal gun regulations and you know let the states decide which of course I, if we had more secession uh then we'd have that a lot sooner i think you know it's interesting that you know if it wasn't for these federal laws i could have a gun in vermont you're a felon yes yeah, this is this is something that's kind of interesting about felons um, and guns. So the idea that uh, letting felons own guns uh, makes the world makes the the, the nation a more dangerous place seems to be disproven because over in Vermont and I know in Florida and many 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 states across the United States, it's legal for you to own, say, a black powder pistol. 
Now, if it's legal for a felon to own a black powder pistol and felons being able to legally own firearms is dangerous, where are all the liquor store robberies done with black powder pistols? Because the notion here is is that felons being able to legally own is dangerous. Felons can legally own black powder pistols. Why do felons then not rob convenience stores with uh, black powder pistols? It's because your laws don't stop somebody who wants <laughs> to rob a liquor store, whether they're a felon or not. It doesn't stop anything. How many crimes in the United States are committed with black powder pistols? And I'd say that the the percentage of, of armed crimes in the United States that are committed with black powder firearms is somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.1% or lower. You know, that one in a high. thousand. Yeah, that tops. High. And that just goes to show how stupid the gun laws are that limit felons from possessing weapons. Thanks, Robert, uh, for your call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Uh, let's talk to Matthew. He's in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Matthew. Matthew in Texas. Fort Worth, Texas, going once. Matthew in Fort Worth, going twice. Hey, are you here? Hey, You're hey, there. Hey. Go ahead, Matthew. Sorry, I had my phone on mute. Here you are. You're on the air. Okay. Yeah, hey, um, I'm guessing uh, Christopher Cantwell is on air today, is he? Uh, Christopher Cantwell is no longer a part of Free Talk Live. We uh, we removed him from the co-host list. He is still certainly free to call in, and he has uh, since done so, at least on one occasion. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I was wanted to. Uh, there were two things I wanted to call in about. One was I wanted to tell uh, Cantwell a story about a couple of weeks ago. I had to spend the day in a jail to pay off a couple of uh, warrants that were out in my arrest for citation. I didn't want to get arrested, but I wanted to, you know, tell him that. Obviously, I don't know how he does it as an activist because I know most people like him, like activists like him, you know, fought, you know, things like this a lot more. Fought so exactly know, what? You know, I, I'm sorry. What? Fought. fought what though? A uh, citation. What kind of citation? Oh, there's a uh, traffic violation. So you went so to you jail for went to jail rather than. Yeah, it was. I got pulled over. They were like two months past due, and because of the uh, finance, the financial situation, I put myself in. I just wasn't able to pay it off. So fast forward two months. I get a uh, call a couple weeks ago from a... Uh, Hold that thought, uh, Matthew. It's Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. A revolution in body protection has arrived only at FortressSurvivalLLC.com. Introducing the revolutionary patented Level 3 Bulletproof Vest. 100% Kevlar, 100% American-made. Concealable, fully adjustable, and the lowest price on the market. Adult size normally $289.99, now just $250. Kid size normally $239.99, now just $200. Get affordable protection with a Level 3 a Bulletproof Vest from FortressSurvivalLLC.com. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Psalm 31.3. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor period with packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. Why would you go anywhere else? KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level four. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free water purification kit for a limited time with any body armor package. Go to KDArmor.com. That's C-A-T-I armor.com. Come and take it. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. This is Charlie Sundstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit, the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, and your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards. It's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your credit score. But don't be afraid to use your credit. You need several accounts in order to have a credit score. Just keep the corresponding payments within your means. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting VanDykeMortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. 
By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hello Keen costume dance party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here toll-free, 855-453 is the number. Whether you want to talk about uh, the gun violence, specifically in schools, how do you have an effect on that? How can uh, things change in that way? What can be done, if anything, to reduce the school gun violence? Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I say more freedom is the right answer, uh, but you can share your thoughts with us also on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. As we go back to Matthew, who's actually calling about something a little different, uh, going to jail, apparently, for a traffic ticket is what it sounded like. You were just barely kind of telling us uh, what happened there, Matthew? And you were comparing yourself to a former co-host on Free Talk Live, Chris Cantwell, as though he was somehow more of a you know badass activist than you are. But anybody who's willing to go to jail for a traffic ticket, I would say, is definitely uh, pretty hardcore. Go ahead with your story. Uh, I want to consider it pretty hardcore. Uh, the jail that uh, I, the, the city that I live in, you know, it's not really dangerous. I mean, there was like ten of us. I was like the tenth person of that jail cell, but. Um, How did you end I up in jail for a traffic ticket? I, that's what I want to know. What what happens there? Okay, so the short version. <laughs> the short version. Sorry, but one of them was four of them was for speeding, the other one for running a red light. Um, and when you get pulled over by a cop, it's different than when you know you uh, when, when a camera catches you. So, so were these camera uh, camera catches? Was, were these cameras what? situations? No, no, no. This wasn't a camera situation. It was a cop pulled me over. Okay, you're hell on wheels with four speeding tickets and a uh, and a running a stop sign. Go ahead. <laughs> so um, when they ever issue a citation, you have like 30 days to pay it off or you know plead your case. Um, at the time, I didn't have the money. I'm currently in a financial situation with debt, and my car actually just got repossessed. That kind of just um, problem solved. Four take off. What? Problem solved. Yeah. So I thought, anyways, the marshal called me a couple weeks ago, and you know we went back and forth with him. Hey, it's got this new dog. So he's like, okay, well, I mean, do you want to be arrested? Or he's like, no, I actually knew this one. I just got it. So we figured out, okay, best advice. I was like, I, I'll get off tonight. Um, come to my cell phone. My dad was actually kind enough to give me a drive. You know, give me a ride to the jail. And just to clarify, this was because you didn't pay because you couldn't afford it. Yeah. Okay, so you were in default. You, did you miss so a court date did, as well? I spent, one night, I, spent, I spent one night in jail, and they released me Sunday morning, and they just forgave. Because both citations by that time equaled like $800, and you typically get like two to $300 credit for spending a day in jail. That's pretty sweet. It's $50 credit here in uh, in New Hampshire per day. Really? Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> the judge was actually really I'm pretty sure it all sucks. So, yeah. <laughs> 
No, I mean, I know New Hampshire's supposed to be coming like the libertarian ha haven. Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, there's no doubt about that. If you uh, if you go and check out the I Free State more Project. That, would happen down here. Hey. that doesn't work that way. Yeah, you can't. I, so, <laughs> I lived in Florida and I wished really hard too. Yeah, it doesn't work that way, Matthew. And, and the reason why is because there just aren't enough libertarians anywhere. So, you know, what what you've got happening in New Hampshire is every single month there are dozens of people. There like last month I think there were at least two dozen new people at the New Movers Party and that's not everyone who moved, that's just whoever came to the New Movers Party. Uh there's more people moving here now in a month than the average big city like Fort Worth has in total. And we're we're seeing more and more people come here and just having those numbers makes a huge difference when it comes to uh, to achieving more liberty in our lifetime. I mean, we've actually got voluntarists, anarchists, libertarians who've been elected as Republicans and Democrats here in New Hampshire to state house positions. You know, I'd recommend for you, Matthew, and thanks for calling and sharing your story tonight. I really appreciate it. But what I'd recommend is you check out the 101 Reasons That Liberty Lives in New Hampshire. You can go to 101reasonsfilm.com. It's just an hour-long documentary film. And and it just burns through 101 really persuasive reasons why this is the place to come to if you care about liberty. Thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And that's why you and I are here, Mark. You mentioned that you're from Florida, so am I. Not because of the movie. We were here long before the movie. Right. I'm actually one of the ex or the uh, co-producers of that film. And uh, and it, it really is a persuasive thing you know, to, to watch this, if you care about liberty. If you don't care about liberty, then just please stay where you are. Uh, if you're already in New Hampshire, things are going well where you live. Then, yeah, if you're already in New Hampshire and you hate freedom, then it's going to get more uncomfortable here for you because we literally do have dozens of people coming here. Statism is only thirty-five miles away, no matter where you are in New Hampshire. So, one hundred and one reasonsfilm dot com, hour-long documentary, totally free. You just go watch it online and then share it with your friends who also care about freedom. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. And we were talking a lot about gun freedom here tonight. So you're certainly still free to uh, to discuss that with us. Let's go to Larry. He's in Indianapolis, uh, or Larry is actually in Columbus, but listening to WIBC in Indy. Hey, Larry. Hey, guys. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Hey, I, I, I thought I'd be the last guy that ever talked about doing away with some civil liberties and freedoms. But, you know, when I look at, at, at these uh, massacres that have gone on, most of these people seem to be like they're copycats. And yeah. to me, the media is driving a lot of that. Uh, we, the media just has to fill 24 hours a day once one of these disasters happens. And I, I, think, that, I, I think maybe we ought to dial back our free speech about uh, covering these types of catastrophes. I know that sounds, uh, you know, uh, the, the forefathers probably rolling over in their graves, but uh, somehow we've got to stop making a spectacle of this more than it is because it's just driving other people to be a uh, copycat. Well, Sheriff John, is, Sheriff John Hanlon, the guy that is the county sheriff where this uh, occurred, he said yes, he's yes. not going to even say this guy's name. Um, he um, And you'll note, it has not been said on this show this evening. Um, I don't know his name. Yeah. Right. Well, and I'm not going to say it just yeah. because I think it's uh, it's an interesting idea what the sheriff had. And, you know, I'm willing What's to go the, with now, it. Why? Why, why is it? Why, why am I not, not saying it? Or why is it an interesting idea? Both. I'm not saying it because huh, let's see what it's like if we don't mention the name of one of these s lunatics, these sick, yeah. murderous lunatics, and instead we talk about people like the sheriff, John Hanlon. We talk about the um, the Chris Mintz, the the guy that uh, rushed towards him. Mm -hmm. Many people are hold, um, lauding uh, his behavior, and I think his behavior is laudable, but I'd like to point out that if um, you know the people that want to limit folks from having weapons – um, if Chris Mintz had 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 a weapon, it might be that this guy would, uh, you know, if, if more people would have been saved. I think the body count would have been uh, significantly smaller if that gentleman had had a weapon. Sadly, that, he was in the second like classroom, not the first, but yeah. yeah. So, Larry, what right. you're saying, though, then, is that you think people should voluntarily not say the name or that there should be some sort of prevent rule preventing uh, people from saying the name? <laughs> I hate to say it, but I think we should come up with, you know, it's almost like inciting a riot or yelling fire in a, uh, a movie theater. You know, uh, I think this is this uh, coverage, not just the, the, the shooter's name, but the coverage itself becomes uh, so incendiary. And those people that are on the edge, it just starts, that's all they can start to, to think about. I mean, you could. So you're saying there should be some sort of government prohibition. You're saying repeal free speech. 
and put in a prohibition on saying someone's name. I, I got to disagree with you there. I think that if you can persuade no. people to do it, I think if it's a good idea and, you know, news companies, if they feel like their audiences are demanding that they not be given this information for the reasons you're citing, then I think that's fine. I think try to persuade people to do the things you want them to rather than trying to, to outlaw them. I mean, because, you know, it's a slippery slope. First, it's the names of uh, yeah. the murderers. And then it's, you know, what about somebody who robs a convenience store? Should they also not have their name out there? I mean, that guy is this guy killed himself, apparently, in this particular case after a gun battle with the police. Uh, but, you know, plenty of criminals are committing crimes. Yeah. and they're getting named in the media and they're still alive. So does that, you know, yeah, what different parameters saying, do you put on it? I'm not saying the criminal's name. I don't think that has any any of the outcome. I think it's the the whole coverage from, you know, talking to the man on the street or the, the people in the classroom. And You're saying restricting there, coverage just, entirely? I'm saying tone it down. Tone it I, I don't down. know what the answer well, is, but well, I know it's certainly that, not restrictions that, on free speech. Well, let's okay. Let's 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 see if we can work the, uh, a compromise in here. Um, Barack Obama had an opportunity. He did go on television. He did talk about this circumstance. He did call for action, and um, he could very well have one of his uh, you know many bureaucrats there in the White House write up a set of guidelines about how the news media should um, handle this, and then issue that set of guidelines, and then they can choose to uh, follow those guidelines or not because at this point people aren't really asking the media to not do this thanks larry for your call tonight i appreciate it the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE 855-450-3733 there's a difference though between suggestions and a mandate 100 percent. and you can share your thoughts here on free talk live Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof form of money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom and the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. They say life is about choices. So let me introduce you to one of the best choices you can make in life, Granger Choice. The Granger Choice product line has just about everything we need to keep this place running, from batteries to V-belts, safety to sump pumps. And with Granger Choice, we can trust that every product is dependable and cost-effective. When it comes to making life choices, here's a great one, Granger Choice. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash choice or stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. <laughs> no way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? They found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com. PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from Patriot. PatriotNecklace.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com For over 12 years, Halverson Enterprises CEO Peter Weathers has taken a hands-on approach in all aspects of the tech firm's growth and day-to-day -day business. But employees say the executive's true talent lies in his unique ability to recognize great ideas and then absolutely ruin them. For as long as I've worked here, Peter has been able to sit down in a meeting, listen to a million different ideas, pick out the one that makes the most sense creatively and financially, and then totally destroy it until there's basically nothing worthwhile about it left. He's remarkable. Employees through Throughout the company say they're most impressed by Weather's ability to water down promising ideas with meaningless jargon, consistently choose the wrong person to head up every project, and inject virtually every halfway decent thought with his own short-sighted and terrible insights. At our all-hands meeting the other week, our team put forth a very feasible plan to boost productivity, and it was really incredible to see Peter's mind at work, just taking every good aspect of our proposal and dismantling it like a small child. 
This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here on the live Saturday edition. The toll-free number is... 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, Skype into the show tonight. Had a lot of phone calls. Not a single Skype. Skype username, lrn.fm. If you've got it, uh, it's worth using because you'll upgrade your sound quality and you'll sound better, and that's always a good thing. Sounds like you're right in the studio Almost. sometimes. It can. Uh, so, again, Skype username, lrn.fm. As we continue here with your calls and thoughts, we'll go to Jason listening in Indianapolis or the Indianapolis area to WIBC. Hey, Jason. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Go ahead. Hey, uh, I just yeah, I just wanted to respond to a caller you had earlier who had mentioned that uh, a business owner who uh, elects to have a gun-free zone at their business um, would be should be responsible uh, for uh, causing or um, giving protection or you know. Um, and at first, when I heard him say that, um, I, I agreed. And then one of you uh, mentioned that you completely disagreed and that it should be the individual's responsibility. And I'd let us think in. I'm like, well, of course, it should be our responsibility. Um, and maybe I'm not fully aware of what these gun-free zones are about. If they, are they statutes? Are they laws? I mean, am I going to get in trouble for taking a gun into these, or am I just going to be asked to leave? Well, it depends. I, I mean, if I you're talking know. about state property, then you could probably get arrested for it. If you're talking about uh, the Taco Bell or whatever, uh, and I don't, I'm sorry, I'm not saying Taco Bell has a gun-free zone policy, but you know, whatever business it would be, then no, you would not be arrested for that. The worst you would face would be that the business owner, if they detected that you had a gun, would throw you out. Well, yeah, I and and I understand that, I guess, but. I do agree with what you said earlier that and more freedom is is what we need, um, and personal responsibility is actually what we need. Whether it's personal responsibility for myself, for my family, um, for just being a decent person in society, we need more responsibility and less entitlement mentality. Thinking that somebody else should take care of us just because we're Americans are just because we live in the land of the free. I agree with that, um, and I think that we don't live in the land of the free. That's ridiculous at this point. Absolutely. But, uh, we are not, we're not as free as people think we are. Right. And and we're, we're taxed. We're regulated. With freedom or with liberty comes the idea of you do need to have responsibility, and I think you're encouraged to have responsibility in a free society. If you actually did have a free marketplace where there weren't all these government programs around to remove responsibility from you, like you know people don't have the responsibility of deciding generally to where to send their kids to school, the government does that for them. You know people don't have the responsibility to take care of themselves in a lot of cases because the government will do that for them. They'll send them a monthly check or whatever. So once you get rid of these government uh, programs that are there for people, then that's not to say they can't get help if they're in a, a situation where they have a medical emergency or they need some sort of assistance. There would still be private charity that can help with those things. 
Um, but just having the government entitlement programs encourages that entitlement mentality. So I think just by having more freedom, you'll see more responsibility being engendered in people. Yeah, when you talk about, um, so, you know, when they, when they say the land of the free, um, freedom can be an absolute, and obviously no uh, existing form of government today is going to allow the absolute of freedom. But freedom can also be sort of compar um, a comparison to other places. And at the time um, that, you know, say the Star Spangled Banner was written, then there was a pretty good argument the United States was the land of the free. And certainly it wasn't the most powerful nation on earth, but at the time, you know, land of the free. I'll, I'll give them that. Um, over time now, we can see that in the last 20 years or so, uh, the United States has slipped down or other nations have surpassed it on the world's uh, freedom charts. If you look at them, the United States— Wasn't it down at number 20 in the, the, the latest one? On the Cato Institute, uh, yeah. one of Human Freedom Index. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the case. And then financial freedom, or fiscal freedom or whatever it is, uh, economic freedom, it tends to be a, a, you know, a bit higher than that on these lists, depending on whether it's but the— But not past the top 10. It's no, it's not in the top 10. 10. And I think that I think that the Star Spangled Banner needs to be retired. I mean, when you have places like Canada and Great Britain passing New Zealand, um, you know, passing up the United States on World Freedom Indexes hand over fist. Well, you know, at that point, you should call yourself the greatest or whatever, but you can't call yourself land of the free anymore. Jason, any other thoughts? Go ahead. Um, no, I just I, I think that uh, we need to rely less on our government. Uh, they're not they're not out for our freedoms. There's I'm no doubt about that. Happy. They're only looking out for themselves. <laughs> Thanks, Jason, for your call tonight. I appreciate it. Toll free number for you to bring up whatever's on your mind. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Question from earlier is what if anything should can be done about the school shootings? Uh, 855 450 free. And of course, we've had a bunch of different uh, suggestions here tonight. And that's one of the problems with mandating things on people is that everybody's got their own, de uh, own idea as to how to force people to do things in a way that they think is going to have certain, uh, you know, outcomes. And, you know, we've heard everything from restricting free speech to controlling who can, uh, who can have firearms, mental health, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, you know, I don't think that any one answer is the right answer, but if politicians decide that it is, then it's forced upon all of us. And we really can't say, you know, we can't really do much about that besides complain. Well, plus there's centralization to look at. Um, one of the reasons that people do shootings at schools is because there's a lot of people collected there. Sure. Um, unarmed people. Yeah. A lot of people who are forcibly unarmed, unable in many cases uh, legislatively to arm themselves. Um, you know, you, they're, they're all together in one spot. I wonder how many homeschooling shootings there have been. Probably none. Because it's decentralized, right? People are at home. I mean, there's surely a, there's been some kind of accident at home with a gun. Maybe it has to, and, and certainly they've probably happened at homes um, homes that are homeschooling. You know, I, I also know the answer. I also suspect that uh, homeschoolers are better adjusted than their government school or even private school peers because, you know, in a government school, you're forced to be in a place with people who you don't like. They're, inevitably, they're and it's be always conflicts. the same age. I haven't had too many workplaces where everybody's sort of the same age. That's and true. You're encouraged to only hang out with people who are your age. Um, you learn things from people who are older, and you're able to teach things to people who are younger. I, and I, I think, think you can learn things from people who are younger as well. Certainly. Let's go to Renee, listening in the Indianapolis area to WIBC. Hey, Renee. Hi. Hey, you're on the air. Um, thanks. Hope you guys are having a good evening. Of course. Um, We're here with you. I have. <laughs> I have a few things here. The gentleman who was talking about tasers, um, my concern there is, is, do you realize how close you have to be to a person to tase them? Yeah. Um, um, so somebody called in, and what his claim was is that it was it was sort of politically impractical to arm teachers, and a lot of teachers that he's met, he wouldn't want to see particularly armed anyway. However, that it would be a lot safer to arm uh, teachers with tasers. Now, I, I don't know. Which kind of taser are you talking about? The ones that shoot barbs or the ones where you have to touch somebody with it? Um, both. Okay. Um, I have a brother that, that works locally close with the uh, police and fire department. And I do know when he, for his 30 years of working at one of the local hospitals, um, he did carry a firearm on his side. He was a security guard. And, you know, some of his jobs, he, you know, he had to tie down people. He had to be there. Um, a lot of cases, I think if it wasn't for his presence of being there and, 
you know, being he was in uniform and he was licensed and still is licensed to carry a gun and still does to this day, he could have, you know, he has prevented many things from happening. And as a grandmother and as a mother, I would be very, very open to teachers who are trained, who've been through all kinds of courses and have certification, have had background checks. If they desire to carry a weapon, I'm 100% for it. I, I am a gun agree. owner, and I do. And I am a gun owner, and I am a grandmother. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. that I carry. It, you know, you shouldn't yes. force someone to carry a weapon who doesn't want to. But any teacher who wants to learn how to uh, defend themselves and others should absolutely be able to. And each school should be individually making these decisions for themselves. So that way, uh, you know, you know, different people can decide which kind of security system, if any, they want to send their kids to instead of it all being yeah. top down from, you know, the government on down. Thanks, Renee, for your call. Um, so a, I would say that anybody who doesn't want to carry a fire extinguisher shouldn't have to carry a fire, ex fire extinguisher either. What the caller was suggesting is that schools make a decision to hand uh, to hand less than lethal um, the protection. original caller, not the, Renee. Right, the, ri the original caller, less than lethal protection to teachers. And a taser was what he was recommending, but I think that bear spray or perhaps a, a handgun <laughs> with rubber bullets or something like that. Look, I would much rather my kid be in the classroom with a uh, with you know somebody with a taser in many cases than somebody with a I'd rather have a taser arm. than bear spray. That's going to cause a problem. What do you mean? Well, I mean, that it's pretty easy. Well, obviously, there's not going to be downwind in a classroom you or whatever. You walk out of the classroom and yeah. let it air out as yeah. best you can do. I don't think I'd want to be in an enclosed space if somebody was going to let off a can of bear spray. <laughs> well, that's going to have to be a bad Do you want to be in a, a controlled space while somebody's with letting off a, kids? No, with, with a uh, firearm? Yeah, I see where you're coming from. You're going to be deaf. A bear spray will clear, you know, your eyes yeah. will clear out if, in a few minutes. If I had to choose, though, as far as arming somebody... Uh, Taser versus bear spray, I'd choose the, the taser. Taser's 15 feet. Anytime. Bear spray will go a bit further. Toll free number tonight, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. This is Free Talk Live, hour number three of the live Saturday show, continuing shortly. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, October 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.26 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,138 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $241. 
Antiwar.com reports the Monday loss of the major northern Afghan city of Kunduz was one of the biggest losses in years in the ongoing war. And while on Thursday officials were claiming they'd retaken the city already, the reality is that the Taliban still holds most of the city heading into the weekend. In the grand scheme of things, Afghan officials are trying to downplay the situation and insisting that they were able to hold their own in fighting against the Taliban, even if they did not always win. But locally, the question is still how they lost to the Taliban despite outnumbering them. Afghan police and soldiers both have opinions on this matter. As is often the case in the wake of a military defeat, everyone is trying to shift responsibility. Afghan soldiers insist the police were cowards who surrendered quickly while police maintain that the Afghan troops, despite having much better weaponry and more training, were soft and hid in their base for most of the fight. This effort to shift blame goes all the way up the chain of command with higher ranking officials blaming the lack of reinforcements or the lack of additional weapons shipments for the losses, but the reality is that no one seemed to believe Kunduz could be lost until the moment that it was. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates, like Namecheap and Amazon, at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. Or you can shop directly from FPP with Bitcoin in the Bitcoin store. That's shop.fppradio.com. UPI reports Education Secretary Arnie Duncan plans to step down in December from the post he has held for seven years. Duncan, a member of President Barack Obama's original cabinet, told the White House on Friday he will be returning to Chicago to be closer to his family. He will be replaced by John B. King Jr., a former New York State Commissioner and recently appointed Deputy Secretary at the department. Duncan has clashed with teachers unions, parents, and Congress during the time in office over issues that include testing and school privatization. Duncan's wife Karen and his two children recently moved back to Chicago where they lived before he took the post. When the family moved in July, Duncan's spokeswoman said he intended to commute to Chicago on weekends. Duncan's spokeswoman Dory Nolt said Secretary Duncan remains committed to his work in the cabinet and will continue to serve at the pleasure of the president. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a U.S. district judge on Friday ordered Arkansas to continue payments to Planned Parenthood for its treatment of three women who challenged Governor Asa Hutchinson's directive cutting off Medicaid reimbursements to the organization. The order applied only to the case of the three plaintiffs, although the judge did suggest that Planned Parenthood as an organization might be able to successfully challenge the cutoff. Judge Christine Baker held that the three women, identified in court papers as Jane Doe's, had demonstrated that they would incur irregular irreparable harm should they not be able to access contraceptive care and other services through Planned Parenthood. The preliminary injunction issued by the judge on Friday follows a temporary restraining order she put in place two weeks ago. Hutchinson, a Republican, said in a statement that the ruling was limited to the three women and that he would direct the state health department to prohibit funding to Planned Parenthood consistent with the court's ruling. Planned Parenthood gets about $500 million annually in federal funds, largely in reimbursement under Medicaid, the government's health care program for the poor. In Arkansas, a reaction from social conservatives to the judge's move was swift. Planned Parenthood said almost all of its work in the state covered services other than abortions. A spokesman for the state attorney general said no decision had been made regarding an appeal of the ruling. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. Sources are confirming your dog died earlier today, and we're all really sorry you had to find out about it like this, buddy. Though it's a lousy thing to have to learn from an online web video, and even sh 
prettier to hear from a cold, hardened newsman's voice that you can't put a face to. Your pet passed away in his sleep while you went out today, and we understand how shocked you must be right now. Sources added that there are many local shelters with animals in need of a good home, though we understand that no dog can ever truly replace the one you just lost. I lost a dog once, but my mom was the one who told me about it, and she was quite the comfort. In this week's op-ed pages, Pantene CEO Marcus Russo laments feeling like the only one who gives a shit about rich, lustrous hair. In other news, a study finds that newborn infants can tell if their parents are losers. A man who just assembled a desk is unsure how he has every screw left over. And Jeff Beck is lured into a dark alley with the old guitar pick on a string trick. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here. Hour number three is what we're kicking off here, the live Saturday edition of the program with you in the studio tonight. It's Ian. And Mark. Our toll-free number if you want to join us, 855-450-FREE. Lots of talk tonight about guns and specifically school shootings. The question that, uh, Mark, you had asked earlier is, what do you do about this? You know, Some politician saying, we must do something, but what? And who's we anyway? Toll free numbers 855 450 free. I say more freedom is the answer, not less. Although a lot of proposals tonight for fewer freedoms. Somebody proposed restricting free speech. Uh, the media shouldn't be able to talk about these things in the way that they are, that person was saying. Another person said that uh, there needs to be more enforcement of the existing laws. There needs to be more enforcement of the mental health uh, restrictions. And of course, I would like to know who decides. Who shouldn't get a gun because of mental health issues? A man in a robe? Well, we've seen that men in robes, uh, at least here in our very own New Hampshire, which is supposedly a gun-friendly place, told our friend Derek J. Freeman that he couldn't have a gun. Well, excuse me, that he couldn't conceal carry a gun. He can still have the gun. He can open carry it legally here in New Hampshire, but he can't conceal carry it. Why? Well, because he was deemed to be unsuitable. Why is that? Well, because he talked back to the police or something. You know, he didn't do exactly what he was told on a few occasions by the police, not because he's been violent, not because he's dangerous or because he's mentally imbalanced, but from the state's perspective, not doing what you're told is a mental imbalance. From the state's perspective, from those who wish to control you, if you have what they call oppositional defiance disorder, where when you're told to do something, you don't really appreciate it very much, I'm I like wonder that. if George Washington had that. I don't know. I wonder if Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin, if they, if the uh, the King of England, if 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 it took a diagnosis to keep them uh, disarmed, if he would have decided they had op opposition defiance disorder. Well, oppositional defiance disorder is a problem for the government, and I consider it to be a good thing that people have that. I think people should think independently and say no to government bureaucrats when they're making ridiculous demands. Uh, but the government bureaucrats are going to see that as di you know disobedience. They're going to see that as a problem. And if that's a reason for them to restrict you from having firearms, you better believe they're going to take that. So, again, who makes these decisions? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Ian and Mark in the studio. We go back to your calls and thoughts. First up, Mike in Price, Utah. You're on Free Talk Live listening to KOAL. Hello, Hi Mike. There. Hey. I think uh, rather than demonizing gun owners and having a problem with over 300 million firearms in the United States, we should take advantage of it and encourage people to use things like the Peacekeeper application. And rather than uh, depending on local law enforcement people, you know, the community who probably has guns and probably a lot closer than cops can show up quicker than law enforcement. So uh, you mentioned the Peacekeeper app. I got to say, I'm a more of a fan of Cell 411 personally. I think that it's a, a slicker, uh, more more refined app that uh, is seeing updates more frequently. And it's only 99 cents. Uh, and it does a very, very good job of alerting people. What these apps do uh, that you're referring to, Cell 411, Peacekeeper, is they allow people in a community to come together and, and sort of create your own emergency response network, basically. So you can open up cell 411 and you can send an alert out to your friends or your family members or your neighbors or all of the above or even total strangers that you need help. 
You know, maybe it's uh, mm-hmm. there's a fire or a medical emergency or some sort of situation with a criminal or the police or whatever. You can send out the appropriate alert and then your friends can respond and say, hey, you know, I'm on my way. I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. Uh, yeah, and it's a really you're cool app. Get a quicker response time with armed citizens locally than you're going to with law enforcement. I think so. And if you if you've got the grassroots network to put it together, whether it's a like a like a community, uh, what do they call them? neighborhood watch, like a neighborhood watch group, or you know, obviously huge. your friends or whatever. So if you already have our cop block, is another great group that this would be useful for. Uh, this is an incredibly useful tool. If you're starting from scratch, obviously the the trick is to convince people and persuade them into being willing to try this tool out. And that's the real hump with these things is to persuade people to come on board and you know experiment with it. Mike, thanks for sharing uh, your thoughts tonight. Let's continue with Jen listening in Manchester, New Hampshire. Jen, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, how you doing tonight? Hey Jen, what's the on your mind? Thing- well, you know what? The first thing we need to do as far as our political elitists are is to get them to pass national constitution carry. Basically, get the laws out of the way that prevent people from being able to carry on their person, whether concealed or open, and choose to defend themselves. And we need to change the dialogue in the sense that we need to talk about evil criminals and sick bastards. And I agree with Mark, uh, not saying his name, who would go out and do this sort of thing, no law in the world is going to stop that. And all these gun-free killing zones are doing is fish in a barrel. You know, there's a nice big pretty sign on there that says no guns allowed, no knives allowed, no whatever it is that you want to defend yourself with allowed. I'm curious, is this so Jen, the- former state representative? Mover for yes. the state project? <laughs> Jen Coffey, uh, just wanted to mention for our, for our listeners that you are going to be speaking on stage at the upcoming Keenvention, and uh, you've, yes. you've done some great stuff for weapons freedom here in New Hampshire. It was your bill that uh, was one of the earliest real success stories for the Free State Project. Of course, for our listeners that don't know, the Free State Project is the idea of con- uh, combining libertarians into one place, into one geographic area, which is New Hampshire. Uh, Jen, you're one of the earliest movers, and have you know you passed actually you helped pass a knife piece of knife legislation that basically legalized possession of all types of knives in New Hampshire. It was an yep. amazing success story. Uh, you're no longer a state rep, but you're still a liberty activist, and you're one of the longest uh, running ones. You've been here for a long time. When did you move to New Hampshire for the Free State Project? In June of 2005, but wow. my mover number is 108. I didn't quite make it into the first 100. Still, though, that's uh, <laughs> it's a pretty early mover. It's earlier than, than us, Mark. We moved in September of 2006. And so Jen and uh, several other early movers are going to be on stage at Keenvention coming up here in just about four weeks, just under four weeks from now. Uh, yeah, it's October yeah. 30th through November 1st. You're going to be on what is called the Old School Panel, which it's coming back this year. We did it the first year of Keenvention. This is the third Keenvention, and we didn't do it last year. Year. Uh, and I, yeah, I wanted it's to bring kind it of an honor. Thank you. <laughs> it's kind I, of an honor. It's going to be yeah. an honor to have you. We're also going to have the first mover for the Free State Project. Jackie Casey is going to be coming to Keenvention. Yeah. So, like, this is maximum perspective, right? Like, we've got the first mover coming on this panel. <laughs> uh, so, I think the old the old school panel is about having people who've been here for a long while. Uh, 10 years or so, to be able to kind of give us yeah. the perspective of, hey, what's it been like watching this whole thing happen, this free state well, project? What, what's amazing, and what's amazing for what I got to do with all the help from all the other free staters and people that were up there helping me is we lifted the bans on all knives in the state of New Hampshire, and we passed knife preemption at the state level. And there were some little towns that had these little known laws that people didn't know about. And if you had a pocket knife that was greater than, say, two and a half inches, you could get in trouble until that was was passed. Hmm. And in both instances, we did it with unanimous consent through the Senate and the House with the governor's signature. And we can't find a place in United States history where not one but two um, or even one pro Second Amendment bill has seen unanimous consent. I didn't realize it was that successful. I I mean, I didn't know about that. And this was under a Democratic governor, right? It was under a Democratic governor. We did a bipartisan bill, and people saw it for what it was. And that's where where it goes back to your callers. I think your callers way off on the media issue. The issue is we need to put the emphasis on the criminal act. It doesn't matter what tool they use to take a life. And I'm, I'm going to say that we do have an absolute freedom. Our absolute freedom is to choose to live and to have the right to defend that life with whatever tool at our means. 
and to choose to live over that criminal that's bent on taking it from us. That is why New Hampshire is a special place. The fact that you could pass a complete repeal of any kind of knife prohibition with complete unanimous support in the House and the Senate <laughs> and the governor uh, really is, you know, just shows Gave New Hampshire is a, a unique place where, you know, you can't really pigeonhole the Republicans or the Democrats here into, you know, knowing exactly what can they're going to say. what we can do with more? Exactly. Come meet is Jen. She's going to be at Keenvention. Thank you, Jen, for your call tonight. <laughs> I appreciate it. She'll be at Keenvention. It's October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are 60 bucks or Bitcoin uh, for the entire weekend. Just go to keenvention.info. And if you want to sign up for the Free State Project, it's freestateproject.org. we got plenty of time for you with your calls and thoughts. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America, from where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeene.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is your Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $22 higher at $1,136 per ounce, and silver is $0.52 higher at $15.06 per ounce. It looks like precious metals have finally made the split from the stock market. We have plenty of Australian silver spiders and kangaroos in stock. Give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. 
You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, it's Ian. And Mark. And don't forget, if you've got some legal work to do, you can go to LegalZoom.com. Use code FTL. You'll save $10 off your legal order. Legal documents like patents, wills, trademarks. You can incorporate your business. They can help you over at LegalZoom.com. Again, use code FTL like Free Talk Live. Code FTL saves you $10 off your order at LegalZoom.com. Let's go back to your phone calls and thoughts. A lot of comments tonight on the issue of school shootings and what, if anything, should or can be done about it. Uh, let's go to Clark listening in Massachusetts to WGAW in Gardner. Hey, Clark. Hey, how you doing? Thanks Welcome, sir. my phone call. It's our pleasure. I just want to tell you guys to guard your gun rights because uh, I'm a 70-year-old white male. I joined the Army National Guard when I was in the 11th grade. I went through basic combat training, basic unit training, advanced infantry training, moved up here to Mass. I was a police officer for three years. I moved to Ashburnham. I went to get my permit to carry a concealed weapon renewed. The chief of police turned me down. He said, you don't need it. (laughs) Wow. Welcome to Massachusetts. (laughs) <laughs> it's supposed to be the worst for uh, gun rights in the United States. Is, is it? What I've, I've heard. Worse than New York or California? Uh, well, I know a guy who's uh, Illinois. Big, he's big into uh, guns, and he says he he just avoids the state. He'd rather drive through New York because the sad thing wow. is, to get to New Hampshire, you must drive through either New York or Massachusetts, um, which are hmm, you know anti-freedom kind of states. You pretty much have to drive through New York, at least some portion of it, right? Yep. Well, it, depending yep. on where you're coming from. But even yeah. if you're coming from Rhode Island, for instance, um, uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Right? Yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. way okay. to get to. So, uh, plus the fact that they take your money for taxes and fishing equipment, and uh, they took a built a Dunn State Park down here in Gardner, a few miles from my house. I fished there for years, and then they uh, started charging you to just to park there. So I'd go in the back gate, and they closed that during the summer because they said people weren't paying; they were walking around to go swimming, and mm-hmm. they put up no parking signs on two roads. So you couldn't just park and walk down there. Now they want you to pay eight dollars just to go in there and fish. It just keeps getting worse uh, down there. And you know, you talked about uh, protecting your gun rights. You got to protect all your rights. If you don't stand up for your rights, then you don't have them. Uh, because these government bureaucrats will take 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 them away. And uh, as long as people don't stand up for themselves, they'll just keep taking and they'll, they'll get away with it. And then before you know it, you know, you live in a prison uh, society. So, you know, you're not too young, by the way, to or too old to uh, to move to New Hampshire. If you love the ideas of freedom. Like to sell my house. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, sign up for the Free area. State Project, too. Yeah, go to freestateproject.org. Have you been up there yet? No, I haven't. I would recommend it. Freestateproject.org. It's for people who really understand liberty. And obviously, you know, if you like gun rights, that's step one. But, uh, you know, understanding liberty and allowing other people to be free is the real key, of course, in order to have uh, true freedom for yourself. So what we're doing is we're gathering liberty-oriented people like libertarians and voluntarists to come here to New Hampshire and, you know, stand up for freedom. And it's actually working. And we just talked to Jen Coffey a moment ago, who was an elected state rep. I mean, the idea that we could actually have libertarians elected to, to a political office is unbelievable to most people who understand those ideas around the country. It just doesn't happen anywhere else. But it's happening here, and we haven't even officially triggered the move yet. The idea behind the Free State Project is to get to 20,000 people who will pledge to make the move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, and then uh, get active when they get here. Mark and myself and uh, over 1,500 other people have already moved. We're early movers. But the goal is to reach 20,000, and currently I think it's over 17 thousand people have signed so we're still waiting to reach that goal so the more people that we can get to sign up for it the better off the sooner we'll reach that goal and then we'll have an influx of thousands more people coming here who care about freedom and who are willing to actually do something to make a difference clark thanks for your call tonight i appreciate your story i appreciate hearing from you former military guy former cop denied a gun permit by the chief of police in some massachusetts town 
I mean, how crazy? Who who else could possibly be considered <laughs> more appropriate to have a gun by someone in the government than someone who's worked for the police and the military? But yet, even he was denied in Massachusetts. Yeah, they just don't do that there. Toll free number. Yeah, isn't it a felony to have like a bullet in Massachusetts? <laughs> I, don't I know. think it is. Toll free number. 855 450 free. Now, it's not much better in Ithaca, New York. That's where Scott's calling from tonight. Scott, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how's it going tonight? What's you guys? on your mind? <clears throat> well, I mean, you probably won't uh, you know, agree with some of the things that I'm just throwing out there. We but usually don't. I would say, yeah, I know. But <laughs> well, sometimes. Whole, Go ahead. I would, well, sometimes, sometimes. I think the collective whole of, of many, many Americans um, does agree, well, we want to keep the country similar to what our founding fathers, um, you know, proposed. I think, you know, just like we're more modernized and things are probably different, way different than what they would have seen in their time. But the thing that comes to mind with some of these shootings is that you know, there is people debate back and forth. There is a mental health issue, obviously, with the, with a the, what issue? Mental health. Shooting. Oh, mental health. I mean, I mean, when when somebody obviously shoots a bunch of people and then takes their own life, there's something obviously wrong there. And in the case where you know there are people that say, "Well, let's get more laws on the books and do this and that." The only the only I, I thought about this, and I you know I had run for office previously, and and you know sometimes we think about you know, throwing out new laws, and, and some of them are pretty worthless. Um, but the thing is, in the case, let's say, in uh, where all the little kids got murdered, hey, Sandy it, Hook. there's not really a law, there's not really necessarily a law that, that's on the books that would have actually prevented that. But there's there's one thing, there was a responsibility of the mother, who was one of the victims, to probably keep her guns away from her son, that was not stable. He was definitely not a stable kid. And if there's any kind of a law, so to speak, that could be proposed, and I know that may not be popular with some crowd, you know, some libertarian crowds, is that if you have somebody that's known unstable, then you should have the responsibility as a gun owner to have to lock your guns up if they're going to be staying in your house. I know you may not agree. Well, um, the, the difficulty of with, with a with a gun that's locked up is is that it's basically useless as far as a defensive weapon. Um, if you're gonna, you know, you, you hear something go bump in the night, and you've got to okay go to the safe and uh, turn on the light, and then you know do the 36 to the right, 44 to the left, 39 to the right. Um, oh shoot, that wasn't well, right. Might be systems- there might be a system where you could have a fingerprint identification. Yeah, there are something. better yeah. systems. My dad Somebody used to have kill a case. You and cut your finger off yeah. and all that. No, I, I see where Scott's coming from. And I think that if you've got someone, whether it's an imbalanced person or a child in a house, obviously having some security around your gun security is, uh, is a pretty good idea. And I remember my dad, there are quick release kind of code cases. My dad used to have a case where there were buttons. You'd put your hands into this case and then you know, you know, you'd be on uh, four buttons on each side or whatever and you'd have to hold the right combination of buttons and then you could just pull out the drawer and grab the gun if you knew the combination it would take you an instant it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, take you long at all thanks scott for your call tonight i appreciate it so yeah for anybody that's in a situation where you've got someone in your house who should not have access to a gun uh, there are ways to secure them but yet still make them relatively accessible of course if it's on your person then that's a pretty accessible way to secure it as well uh, 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. Those are the toll free numbers. And also Skype in tonight, if you like, at Skype username lrn.fm. Your thoughts are welcome on whatever's on your mind. This is Free Talk Live's Live Saturday edition. Healthy, organic, fresh fish, robust, mouth-watering vegetables, all from your home. It's called aquaponics. This brilliant, self-sustaining protein and veggie system is perfect for year-round growing. Know exactly where your food is coming from. Aquaponicsource.com is the one-stop shop for all your needs. Fish, fish food, plumbing, full systems, classes, and more. Learn to build your own system. Go to aquaponicsource.com for a free guide to aquaponics. That's aquaponicsource.com. 
By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blocket Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Yeah! It's Free Talk Live. You can join us toll-free. 855-450-FREE is our number. 855-450-3733 with you tonight. You've got Ian and Mark. We've got a website. It's freetalklive.com. You like the show? You like what we're doing here talking about freedom seven nights a week live here on various different radio stations, over 150 of them. Uh, we've got satellite coverage in Africa, North America, Central America. We're on uh, the internet, of course, in streaming form and podcasts, downloads, etc. You can get Free Talk Live in a lot of different ways. And if you like what we're doing, then you can help support the show by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier. You do that over at amp.freetalklive.com. It's five bucks a month. You get perks like access to the AMP only Facebook group. There's an AMP only podcast, a couple AMP only phone lines as well. You can go to amp.freetalklive.com to learn more, to get signed up with any major credit card through PayPal or use Visa and MasterCard right there on our website. Great way to support Free Talk Live. You know, we give the show away. 
You go online to freetalklive.com. You can download as many episodes as you want completely free. All the features on the site we give away. So if you appreciate what we're doing, this is a great way to support our efforts and support expanding uh, the program into new markets. Go to amp.freetalklive.com to get signed up and learn more about it. That's A-M-P as in advertise, market, and promote because that's what we do with the money. Uh, we amp it. Amp the show. Amp.freetalklive.com. Dot com as we go to Jeff. He's listening in Illinois. Jeff, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. Hey, guys. Hey, what's if, on your mind? If they have these gun control, uh, gun free zones like that everywhere, then the whole country would be uh, as safe as that, uh, you know, uh, community college. <laughs> In other words, we'd, we'd all be, you know what I mean? We'd all yeah. be uh, really a, a sitting duck, a victim, uh, waiting, but not just for criminals, but criminal government. And every dictator is always willing to take away the guns from the people. And uh, the communism, you know, is all about the central bank. And, and the cent- because the fifth plank is the, uh, uh, you know, is the central bank and the communist manifesto. And the, the rest of it is all window dressing. And the whole thing is about having a national foreclosure, which is also the same thing as a communist revolution. It's just how to take away everybody's everything. Um, and the way to do that is to have gun control. Which, of course, leads to knife control, as we're now seeing in uh, Great Britain, where they're trying to restrict people from buying big knives. And, you know, it's not stopping violent crime. It's not uh, going, you know, we had one caller point out there's actually higher rapes now uh, in Great Britain as well because of that, or ostensibly because of that. The old saying is that God made man and Sam Colt made him equal. Once you take away equalizers, like tools to defend yourself, then you'd basically have the biggest person that's able to commit the crimes. And then, you know, I mean, you can go along vilifying uh, people that are uh, muscular for being, you know, dangerous and make them, uh, you know, bow their heads and be particularly submissive. But at some point or another, other, you're, you know, some of them are going to cut loose. In England, and they're having all these uh, influx of Muslim people, and they're committing a lot of the crimes they're having. And really, but the people there aren't allowed to protect themselves. Their own government is, is the worst problem. It's the same problem everywhere. Is the government doesn't allow the people to protect themselves from criminals? Thanks for the call tonight, Jeff. Although I don't know, you know, what the statistics are over there. There are certainly plenty native-born. People in the UK, the chavs, I believe some of them are, are called, sort of yeah. the low life life form types. Yeah, I don't think we have any business uh, trying to guess what the, uh, the the slang words are in England. A chav, I believe, is uh, is one of them, and uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I'm sure that there are all kinds of people causing issues, not just Muslims there. In fact, uh, most of the Muslims I know are very peace-loving people. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Bill in Indianapolis, listening to WIBC. Hello, Bill. Hi. Um, yeah, on this subject that you've been talking about, uh, uh, I concur with a lot of things that the other people have been saying. You know, these gun-free zones are basically you're putting out a sign saying, hey, come here and do your shooting because you're going to be safe. Nobody else will have any way to protect themselves. <laughs> it's Pretty ridiculous. Much. Uh, like like uh, Wayne LaPierre said, you know, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And the way they could stop these school shootings is if they put armed guards at the doors in the schools. Now, they should be highly trained, of course, and, uh, you know, but there should be one at least at every major door that comes in the school. The rest that of sounds scary to me, to man. Them. I don't think I'd want to send my uh, child to a school like that. What about, like, just letting the school staff that wants to carry a weapon carry a weapon? Well, there again, if they got the proper training, I see myself, I've, uh, I've been a firearms instructor for most of my life. I uh, spent 28 or my 32 years in the Air Force as a combat arms instructor. So that's all I did was run ranges and teach marksmanship. And, uh, you know, the the key is the proper training. I mean, you can't just give a gun to somebody and say, well, here, do this job. Mm-hmm. And if they haven't had the proper training, they're not going to know what to do. No, Which, obviously. And I've also served in law enforcement. So, you know, with those are the things I'm saying. No, I don't think you want to give someone a gun who doesn't want a gun, right? Like, you would only want the staff no. members who want to have guns and who want to learn about them and train with them uh, to be the ones carrying well, them. Well, it seems there's also well, this all-or-nothing nothing. thing that, that goes along um, with uh, weapons, it seems like. It's always like you either you like guns or you don't like guns. There's all kinds of weapons in between, and they can be useful in circumstances. I mean, I, I, I know of a friend uh, who— told of a story that he was in in a um, situation like this, and a man stopped a robbery with a pocket knife. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you well, know. That, that could happen, but that could happen. But 
What I'm saying is if somebody's trying to come into a school with a, a semi-automatic rifle, a pocket knife is not going to stop them. You know, you it depends on where you're nothing. standing. <laughs> yeah. You get the jump Stab on Stab him right in the back of the neck, you know I mean? <laughs> well, yeah, if you could get close enough to do that, but it, they could probably take you out before you ever got that close. It, it, a gun's a great so, idea. I'm not claiming. I just don't think it's all or nothing. Well, right. I mean, but even having a knife in school well, is prohibited as well. So, it's true. Yeah, I mean, let whoever wants that's to defend true. other people or themselves defend themselves with whatever they want. It's more freedom that's the answer here, uh, not more controls. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate your call and your thoughts well, wait, tonight. What, what, Oh, sorry about that. Toll free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I think if you're going to have a firearm, you, training is, you know, the, the word of the day. It's not something that uh, you should just, you know, get one and wing it. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, there's different levels of training. Uh, you can you can go all out. I mean, my dad has gone to, like, crazy levels of training where he, I think at one of these training seminars, he went. I think he actually went to New Hampshire for it. They would like prod you with a cattle prod <laughs> before you'd start shooting. And the idea was to, I guess, you know, come back from whatever kind of shock uh, that you were coming back from. Because, you know, when you're in a situation, the adrenaline's pumping, it's a completely different uh, encounter in real life when it's something true. goes down as opposed to just standing at a range and shooting. So, you know, at the very minimum, somebody should go to a range and shoot. You know, you should at the very least. Be familiar with your gun. You should, you know, practice drawing the weapon safely, not with your finger in the trigger. Uh, you know, there's things that you can practice over and over again to kind of create muscle memory and, and do yeah. that. Kind of one thing's uh, one thing works when uh, the rubber hits the road, and that's training. Training works when the situation goes down. Our toll-free number uh, for you to join us here, 855-450-FREE, and also Skype in at username lrn.fm. You know, uh, <clears throat> there's another story here that isn't related, but it is sort of breaking news, and that is that the U.S. government appears to have bombed with an airstrike uh, Doctors Without Borders Hospital in Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, the story coming from Fox News, where officials have launched an investigation after 12 local staff members of Doctors Without Borders and at least seven patients, three of them children, were killed after an explosion near their hospital in the northern Afghan city of Kunduz that may have been caused by a nearby airstrike. In a statement, the international charity said the sustained bombing took place Saturday at 2.10 in the morning, local time. Afghan forces backed by U.S. airstrikes have been fighting to dislodge Taliban insurgents who overran Kunduz on Monday. So the Taliban is still fighting down there? Is we got ISIS and the Taliban still fighting it out? Well, I don't know that ISIS is very... Uh, um, is ISIS not in Afghanistan no. much? I thought they held a couple cities. Maybe it was, in, it was Iraq where they're, they're holding yeah, cities. Yeah, that makes... Yes, they're in Iraq. Um, yeah, Taliban essentially was waiting for the United States to get out. Um, you know, the, the government in Afghanistan um, is really just a city-state um, holding Kandahar, and they can't project power beyond there for whatever reason. I don't want to know why. Your thoughts are welcome. You can bring up anything that's on your mind. The remaining moments of Free Talk Live, you can join us at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 or Skype in at Skype username LRN.FM. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. Flu season's on the way, but there are steps you can take now to be prepared, like getting your flu shot. And Walmart makes it simple. Just walk in any time to get your flu shot from one of our certified pharmacists. No appointment necessary. To make it even easier, we accept most insurance plans. A flu shot's your best shot at staying healthy this flu season. And Walmart can make taking that simple step easier than ever. Some immunizations may not be available in all locations due to state law restrictions on pharmacist-administered immunizations. Age restrictions may apply. Okay, open your mouth and say, ah. Ah. 
When your child has a sore throat, you need to know when to get help. The doctor recommended Say Ah Sore Throat Exam is your solution. The scientifically designed oral retractor offers a clear view of the throat, relaxing the tongue and minimizing gag reflex. Compare with a medical grade chart, website, and app. Then you'll know just what to tell your doctor. A wellness plan in your hands in minutes. Go to SayAhNow.com. SayAhNow.com, the new mainstay for every family's first aid kit. The human body is more than 60% water. Your brain and muscles are 75% water, and your blood is 92% water. Water is vital to your body, and alkalizing your water is the key to keep it running at its best. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops keep your entire body healthy, boosts energy, promotes weight loss, and even fights cancer. Call 800-518-7615 or go to AlkaVision.com to find out more. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here, toll-free number. In the remaining moments, we might have enough time to get you in. 855-450-FREEZE, the number 855-450-3733. Also, Skype in at username lrn.fm. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us in real life at Keenvention. Uh, I'll be there for the entire weekend, Mark. You're going to be in Vegas for a portion of it due to the Bitcoin conference you're attending. Yep. Uh, but uh, you'll come back for, I think, the very end of Keenvention. And Keenvention.info is where you can go. It's October 30th through November 1st. Great opportunity to come to New Hampshire and meet the movers and the shakers, the activists who are getting it done. Whether it's in the legislature, we're going to have an all A, A and A-plus rated Liberty state representatives on stage. Where on earth can you find five You know, liberty-oriented state legislatures, and when I'm saying liberty-oriented, A and A-plus rated. Four of them are A-plus, one's an (laughs) A-rated liberty rep. Uh, They're rated by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. You can't find this anywhere else. We're going to have five of them on stage. There's way more than five in New Hampshire, but we can only fit so many on stage at one time. The legislative process, we'll talk about that. We've got a cop block panel that's going to be great, the ladies panel, uh, the Bitcoin panel with Gavin Andreessen, the head programmer of Bitcoin. He's going to be attending. Uh, We talked about the old school panel. We'll even have a new movers panel hosted by our co-host Taryn Lupo, who will be inviting all total newbies to come up on stage, people who've moved to New Hampshire within the last year. Of course, if you're familiar with Free Talk Live, you know we moved here for the Free State Project. 
the Keen Vention isn't a Free State Project official event, but it sure is going to involve a lot of Free State Project early movers. So you get to meet a lot of these folks, and it's an intimate convention, meaning that there aren't a lot of people that attend. So it's only, uh, you know, we're limiting tickets to 100 in advance, and I can tell you there are plenty available. So go grab them right now because you don't want to pay the day of price. It always goes up when you actually pay at the door. So make your plans in advance. Go to keenvention.info. Get your tickets, 60 bucks for the entire weekend or Bitcoin. Keenvention.info. You can even watch videos from the last Keenventions. You can watch the entirety of the previous two Keenventions there, give you a taste of what it's going to be like. But you don't really know what it's like until you're actually here in person when you can go out and do the social activities and go out and do the Robin Hooding or cop blocking or whatever. There's a lot to do. Keenvention.info. As we go to your calls and thoughts, Mary is listening in Indianapolis to WIBC. Hello, Mary. Hi. How are you? Today? Hey, great. Go ahead. Uh, what I want to know is if you are um, a, a law-abiding citizen, okay, what would be the problem in having the background check or possibly maybe they start ha having people get a license to carry guns like they do with to fish, to drive cars? Uh, I don't think we need licenses well, for those things either. Uh, well, I don't, I don't think for fishing you should, but um, – uh, what what I'm saying though is no one's trying to take away rights. Just uh, you know, it just lessens the possibility of some some uh, bad character going to a gun show and. Well, this uh, guy's guns were legally gun. obtained. They were completely legally that. obtained, and uh, they were all they went through all the the paperwork that was necessary. One yes, of the problems with deciding that say you know felons can't have guns is is that that only prevents felons that want to uh, you know obey the law from having guns because you know as well as I do any felon that wants to rob a liquor store can get a gun right absolutely excellent but why, so, why can't uh, why can't a, a law abiding upstanding citizen get a gun there no one's trying to stop well, what if right to carry guns but but because once the law is involved, time, then the, the the government is going to attempt to limit the law-abiding citizens from getting guns because they're going. How do you know that? Because we can see it. Look at Massachusetts, for instance. Um, you know, the more, Connecticut. The, the more laws there are, the fewer people get to have guns. You know, you sadly, governments are very, very bad because they don't know people at distinguishing who should have one and who shouldn't have one. So they just decide over and over again that people shouldn't have them. The government's just giving the background check on on the people. They're not. I, I don't think they're peeking in your doors to see if you have a gun illegally or legally. They're. I mean, depends one, on where you live. I mean, there you are know, absolutely it, places people are arrested all the time in this country. If you're say transporting a gun from one location to another, they'll um, you know they'll look ask to look through your car. They look through the car. They find a gun. They they throw you in jail. Well, if they're a, asking to look through your car. You should got, say no. If you've got a legal right to carry that gun, if the everyone should have car, a legal right to carry a gun. If they whether they have a legal whether it's legal or not, it doesn't make a difference. If the government takes you to trial, you have to pay to defend yourself, and they don't have to pay to pr to prosecute you. Why would they put you in jail if you have a permit? Ask the lady in New Jersey who just got arrested this week for having one in her trunk. With a um, permit? Ask I, she was driving through. She's a mother. It happens over and over again. Um, and there was a there was a guy who was moving an antique weapon in the state of New Jersey. He recently just had to get a pardon from the governor because they were taking a, a gun built in the 1850s. Yeah, I thought it was 300 years old, that gun. No, that was the flintlock. You're right. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, it's just – it's it, Here's the reason, okay. because I there's the only thing those. crazier than a than a uh, somebody going in and shooting up a school are the people um, in the government. I mean, there's only, they're, the, they're the nuttiest people on the planet. But what is wrong with with background checks? Period. What What's wrong with wrong freedom? With What's okay. wrong with just how about I can I just made buy this point wait, 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 wait. I've every gun I've ever owned, I've never bought through the legal process of you know going through and getting background checks or whatever. I just get it from a friend, you know, or buy it from but somebody who wants to sell a gun. One school shooting one school shooting yes if it, it could prevent one look <laughs> the school shooting went on in a gun free zone yeah thank True. you mary I for your call tonight i appreciate it toll free number 855 453 here's an important point i'm going to make it again Felons are disallowed in many state, in most states from having regular guns, but they can have antique weapons. So if you want to do a background check to prevent people from getting stuff, for instance, 
I can buy in many states an antique weapon. I am a felon. Well, they'll How, just say make that restricted too. Where are the crimes being committed? But this is an opportunity to do some science at looking at this. Mm -hmm. If people who um, are disallowed from owning guns legally are going to commit crimes with guns that they can then purchase or weapons that they can purchase legally, where are the knife robberies by felons? Where are the black powder pistol uh, uh, robberies by felons? What this suggests is, is that, that, well, the government doesn't, that the these laws have nothing to do to limit people that you background check on weapons because the people that want to get the weapons will. They're going to get them. Let's go to Rob listening in Lynchburg. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Rob. Yeah, they don't want to stop crime business. They, they just want to take away your freedom. But they sure do. I, I called about about schools. It's, it's just in general, our society is too feminized and too liberal. I, I, my my point is the whole mindset. If a moron comes in your school with a gun, of course, no one can have a gun because we're all liberal. We're liberal controlled. But you're trained to run away and hide. Okay, Ahmed got on the train in Belgium with an AK-47, and two Marines beat the hell out of him with nothing but their hands. One was an airman. You know, there, there is school training. I mean, they're Marines. But, you know, I want my kid to pick up a, a textbook or pick up a chair and bust the guy across the head when he comes in the door, not hide like a girl. Our whole attitude of our country is just wimpy and feminine. I mean, God bless women. You know, they're half the population. You need them. They're, it's a good perspective. But, you know, when this country was all military veterans, you know, in the 50s, we didn't have crap like this. Everybody had PTSD, but, you know, everybody <laughs> could tackle somebody. Everybody could fight back. Hey, My thanks for the call, just, Rob. I appreciate it. I actually had a story that you probably appreciate about the Helicopter Society. We won't have time for it tonight, but maybe in another few days we'll get to that. Thanks for the call. Right. And that is speaking to where uh, where he's coming from. It's a great piece over at Free Range Kids by Lenore Skenazy talking about the idea of these overprotected young people and what that you know, the fallout is from overprotecting young people. It's very, very dangerous. I know one of those uh, military members was an airman. I have to check on it. All right, doesn't um, matter. Let's go to Mark. He's in Bradenton. You're on Free Talk Live. That's Bradenton, Florida, which is down where we're from. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, good evening, guys. Welcome. You know, after one of the, after these shootings, you always hear the outcry, oh, we have to take away guns from the mentally ill. Well, you know, who decides who the mentally ill are? Yeah. If you talk back to a cop or if you have a Confederate flag on your wall, I mean, there's a slippery slope that develops. You know, you heard about the guy from Mass who was a ex-military, ex-cop. You know, for what reason, you know, are they denying him his right? They just told him he didn't think he needed it. That's what the police chief said. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. This is a huge, dangerous, slippery slope to say, oh, well, you should take well, away the guns from those people, but not those people. Eventually, they'll just take away everyone. The highest crime rates are in this country are in cities that have um, you know, rest very restrictive gun laws. Well, I would like to remind people as well, the vast majority of people who commit acts of violence do not have a diagnosis of mental illness. Mark, thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate it. We're short on time, but I want to make sure Jim gets in in Newark. Uh, you're on Free Talk Live. Jim, you got about 20 seconds for the last word. Go ahead. Yeah, on this issue of licenses, there wasn't even a license to marry. So the gay marriage issue wouldn't even be an issue if the government never got involved. You're absolutely right about that. Good way to wrap it up. Jim, uh, thank you for the call. Ian and Mark in the studio. And... You can continue with us tomorrow night for the live Sunday edition. Uh, between now and then, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com and have a great weekend. Blake Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween costume dance party. 
Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event.